And a very pleasant good Thursday evening to you, Gabe Fadias and Sean Morris and the entire TSP game day set as we get ready for the Harlandale Indians and the Brackenridge Eagles on MeTV and the KSET Big Game Coverage app. We have got one heck of a game day show lined up for you tonight. We've got a conversation, a chat with Willie Hall, the longtime coach at Brackenridge, a longtime head football coach at Brackenridge. We've got KSET 12's top 12. We've got great standout performances we've got great standout teams from this past week and sean morris we got i think even though the records are a little misleading yeah. one heck of a football game lined up here at alamo stadium we got predictions at the end of this and you and i you would look at a team harlandale three and one you look at a team brack oh and four and our predictions would be um somewhat reflective of those records right. and i saw your prediction and you've seen mine and that is not the case i think this is going to be a great yeah. 14-5A matchup. Yeah, I think it's going to be a much closer game than what it shows on uh, on paper, and a lot of that has to do with who these two teams have played, and we'll talk about that a little more in the show. Yeah, Harlandale led by Albert Torres there, 3-1 on the season. They defeated Sam Houston last week. Brackenridge, the head coach is Larry Norman. They are 0-4 on the season, though. Last week, they lost a tough one to the Jefferson Mustangs, 34-28. In overtime, Jefferson played as flawless a game, and Sean, in this district, you've got Alamo Heights, and you've got a slew of teams yeah. that are going to be vying for second, third, and fourth place. This is a very competitive district. It really is, and, and you know you got two teams here tonight. The other team I always like to throw in the mix. you got Burbank, and then you got Highlands, and they're a team that's surprising a lot of people this year. So those last three spots are really up for grabs between a lot of teams, and two of them here tonight we're going to get to see play later All on. All right, last week we had some fantastic individual performances. We are going to start right now with some of the standout players from week four, starting with Davenport Wolves senior running back Chaston Gold. Golden, 372 yards and seven. That's right, seven touchdowns on 30 carries in their 62 to 42 victory over Lockhart. How about the brand new Davenport Wolves? They are hot. New Braunfels Canyon Cougars had a couple of guys. Their quarterback, Deuce Adams, threw for 432 yards and five touchdowns as they opened district by defeating the Bernie Champion Chargers. And 49 to 32, and their wide receiver, yes. Xavier Nolan. He caught 12 of those passes for 274 yards and four touchdowns, including one right there. He is Adams' go to guy. How about the Highland Owls? Quarterback Joseph Clay threw for 356 yards and five touchdowns as the Owls beat previously unbeaten Burbank. 42-21. Clark Cougars running back Chris Gertz ran for 282 yards and three touchdowns in their 45-7 win over new old district rival, the Marshall Rams. Get into the end zone touchdown. The Bandera Bulldogs, their running back, Jesse Cardenas, rushed for 151 yards, two TDs on office. Then he jumped over the defense, and he had three sacks, two pass breakups, and nine tackles in their 42-20 win over Cole. How about that? Pearsall Mavericks stud running back Joey Ramirez ran for 305 yards and three touchdowns including this 97-yard touchdown run Get in that there. sealed their 30-29 their victory over the Poteet Aggies. And finally, Brennan Bears, senior defensive back, Keelan Elder. Two interceptions where one was returned for a 45-yard touchdown on their 54-13 district win over the Taft Raiders. Sean, how many weapons do the Brennan Bears have on both sides as of the ball? As many as they want. It seems like every week it's another player on that mm. team that's our player of the game. It seems, so like, weapons. it seems like every year they've got several that line up on year. both sides of the football. Let's look at some big wins from the week for this past week, starting with the Steel Knights as they continue to roll. Although last week it took overtime for them to beat the, the uh, Midland Legacy Rebels by a score of 35 to 28. Sean, clearly, K said 12's top 12, number one team, the Steel Knights. I think they're number 10 in state too. The Pearsall Mavericks and the Poteet Aggies were both 3-0 and going into last week's matchup. Pearsall gets the very close 30 to 29 victory. How about the Smithson Valley Rangers? They beat the Wagner Thunderbirds in a huge district matchup, 21 to 13. They got a big one tonight versus New Braunfels Canyon. Yes, they do. The Bernie Greyhounds stay undefeated as they beat Gregory Portland by a big final, 52 to 27. How about Bernie putting up 52 points last week? Yeah, I think they went down to the Corpus area to defeat Gregory Portland. How about the Jefferson Mustangs? They dominated the line of scrimmage, the time of possession, as they defeat the Brackenridge Eagles in overtime by a score of 34 to 28. Jefferson now playing a role in that 14-5A playoff matchup. Yes, they are. The Pleasanton Eagles get their first victory of the year. They beat the Gonzalez Apaches by a final of 37 to 14. Davenport 
Wolves. This is their first year of high school football. They defeat previously undefeated Lockhart, 62 to 42. The wow. Wolves are four and oh, how about Davenport? How about 62 points on an undefeated team? Wow. That's impressive. The Veterans Memorial Patriots improved to three and one on the season after narrowly defeating the Canyon Lake Hawks on this field goal right here, 31 to 28. Not only, Sean, is there great barbecue in Wimberley, Texas. They got a pretty good high school football Every team year. as well. The Wimberley Texans with a three point victory over the Fredericksburg Batlin Billies, 17 to 14. Big win for Wimberley. The O'Connor Panthers win their second game in a row and they improved to 2 and 0 in district after beating the Harlan Hawks 24 to 14 on a game we carried last week right here on MeTV. And probably the biggest win of the week, the Highlands Owls defeat Previously, K said 12's top 12 ranked Burbank 40 to 21. What a big win for the Highlands Owls. And look at this. Willie Gaskin is easily, to me, one of the top players in Greater Absolutely. San Antonio. He's one of those guys that could play everywhere in San Antonio. 14 5A. I'm telling you, it's Alamo Heights. And it's both of these teams we're going to see tonight, both Harlandale and Brackenridge, amongst a slew of different teams. Jefferson, Edison. Uh, you, you know, you're talking about Highlands. You're talking about a, a Burbank. There are several different teams that are going to factor into that playoff. Run. Absolutely. And going back to the Highlands, I was in Willie Gaskin. We saw him run that, uh, return that punt right there. One of the top receivers in the city. He has great hands, great speed, smart player. Um, every year it seems like there's one receiver that stands out. Willie Gaskin is definitely one of them. And we got to throw props to the game day crew, man. How about this setup yeah, here? Yeah, pretty awesome. At Alamo Stadium. Beautiful I'm gonna background. Point right here. Look at that. I am touching the Tower of America's right there. Look at that. <laughs> boink, boink, boink. Beautiful scenery. Is there a more iconic view than the top? This beautiful stadium as we get ready for a fantastic matchup. Harlandale and Brackenridge a little bit later when we come back. A special uh, outside the locker room featuring a special man who spent a lot of years at Brackenridge High School. Don't go anywhere more. Pick and pull South Texas High School Football Game Day coming up next on KSET.com. KSET Big Game Coverage happening right here on MeTV. It's so easy to love pick and pull. Why? How about the largest inventory in South Texas? How about the ease of finding your part with our interchange in real-time inventory search at pickandpullsa.com? How about an organized yard and maps to find your parts, plus a shuttle? At Pick and Pull, we make it easy to save money on the quality used auto parts you need at a price you can afford. More to pick, less pull from your budget. Now that's Pick and Pull. It's high school football time, and John Wayne is right in the middle of the action. At the end of this game, one of the players will be chosen as the John Wayne player of the game. Go to johnwayne.com right now and vote for the player who you think will win. Pick the correct player and you'll win two tickets to a 2023 San Antonio Gunslingers home game. And just for playing, you'll have a chance to win the John Wayne $10,000 home makeover package. Don't fumble. Go to johnwayne.com and vote before the end of the game. I'm Oscar Cardenas. In football, we fight hard to make it happen. That's what makes us winners. 18-wheeler or company vehicle wreck injury put you on the sidelines? Get a winner to fight for you. A lawyer with grit and determination who will not stop until you get justice and all the money you deserve. And that's Wainwright Injury Lawyers. So don't wait. Call 8. Call Wainwright Injury Lawyers. 888-8888 now. Want to win? You know who to call. That's right. Wainwright. Respect. Justice. Demand it. Wainwright Injury Lawyers. For over three decades, Brackenridge football was synonymous with one name, Willie Hall. The man left a lasting legacy at that very, very proud campus. Folks, here's this week's very special Outside the Locker Room. Coach, talk about your time in the SEISD. In a career that, that spanned several decades, you were impactful both on and off the field in, in this tremendous school district. Talk about your time in the San Antonio School District. They gave me an opportunity, and 
when, when you get an open door and an opportunity, sometimes it's only one chance. So I made the most of mine. I enjoyed it here. I loved the kids. They were the main reason. And um, uh, you love on the kids. You discipline the kids when they need it. Uh, no shortcuts. Uh, it was just a, a great time for me. It was the right time for me. I had uh, kids that needed it, kids that wanted it, and they accepted it. And uh, it was fair to everybody. The rules were as they were. There, there's no bend in the rules. And uh, kids learned to accept that. Parents learned to accept that. And, and it was a good situation. I think his biggest impact had to do with the way he worked with kids from his neighborhood and gave them the ability to think ahead that there's a future. And if they do things right, they do things what he would say the Bracken Ridge way, everything would be okay for them. That's the impact I think he had. He didn't teach just football. Yeah. He talked about life. Coach. Who are some of the, the individuals that were impactful in, in allowing Willie Hall to become the coach, the mentor, the, the man that you ended up becoming? Because you were able to work for and with a lot of very impactful guys. Who were the guys that played a, a big role in, in, in your success? I'm going to start with uh, Lyman Davis for, for hiring me at Brackenridge. Yeah. So he had options. And so I'm going to start with Lyman Davis. And then after that, uh, Diz Reeves, he was more like that daddy figure. Yeah. He was, he was making sure things were done right. Dot your eyes and cross your teeth. And, uh, it was a great deal. You know, I had two men in front of me that uh, I looked up to that uh, I did some of the things that they did and didn't do some of the things that they did. So it was, it was a lesson to be learned. Coach, talk about your love for this Brackenridge community. I have mad love for the Brackenridge community. I mean, 38 years in one spot. Uh, I love the community, the people in the environment. Uh, it was just, uh, it was what I needed. All right, special thanks to the folks here at the San Antonio School District for um, helping us out with, with that shoot. Sean, uh, Brian Clancy, first off, we got to give thanks to Brian Clancy for helping us put this on. He's watching the, the show right now, but Willie Hall, to say he had a lasting legacy at Brackenridge, I think is the understatement of all understatements. Always one of my favorite guys to interview whenever I got to do their games, a class act. And just think of the legacy he left on those guys, not so much the players, but the students that he coached. They're going to remember him for the rest of their lives. All right, folks, don't go anywhere. More game day coming up after this break. It's Pickable South Texas High School Football Game Day on the K-Set Big Game Coverage app and right here on MeTV. It's so easy to love pick and pull. Why? How about the largest inventory in South Texas? How about the ease of finding your part with our interchange in real-time inventory search at pickandpullsa.com? How about an organized yard and maps to find your parts plus a shuttle? At Pick and Pull, we make it easy to save money on the quality used auto parts you need at a price you can afford. More to pick, less pull from your budget. Now that's Pick and Pull. Do you like going fast? Because I do. Hi, this is Jeb Burden with the John Wayne Service Company number 27 race car. 
I'm encouraging you to join the Fast Track to the Trades with John Wayne Service Company. Enroll in the John Wayne Academy for technical excellence today and change your life with a career in HVAC, plumbing, or electrical in just 90 days. Get paid to learn a trade. Take it from me. Get on the Fast Track to the Trades and call John Wayne Service Company, 293-6700. Welcome back to Pick and Pull South Texas High School Football Game Day. Gabe Fuddy, I said Sean Morris. As we prepare for tonight's Brackenridge Harlandale 14 5A contest, and Sean, I am going to fight anybody who says they have a better, more scenic view than what we have here today for this, this fantastic show and this fantastic game as we broadcast live from atop the roof of the Alamo Stadium, iconic, the Rock Pile, Rock Pile that's right. Stadium. And I'm yeah. telling you, it doesn't get any nicer than this. And again, I know I thanked him earlier, but Brian Clancy, Fred Anthony, all the folks in the SAISD, really so wonderfully accommodating. We do all their Friday night games here uh, uh, on, on TSP and KSET. Big game coverage here at Alamo Stadium. We got a good one tonight, Brackenridge and Harlan, though. But first, our wonderful partners over at KSET. We talk about KSET 12's top 12. We're going to run down the week five edition of 12 top, 12's top 12 right now, starting in at number 12, making their debut. The Southside Cardinals, three and one tomorrow night. They take on Medina Valley. At number 11, another newcomer, the Harlandale Indians, you're gonna see them tonight. They're three and one, taking on Brackenridge tonight. And at number 10, another first timer, 12's top 12, Clemens Buffaloes, also three and one. At number nine, the Clark Cougars, three and one on the season. They take on San Antonio Legacy. In at number eight, the Brandeis Broncos with a three and one record. We'll see if they stay. They got a tough one against Madison. Number seven, undefeated Warren Warriors. They're at four and zero on the season. They play Harlan on Saturday. Starting with our six through one rankings, the Johnson Jaguars in at number six, two and one following their big win over Churchill. Alamo Heights Mules in at number five with their three and one record. They take on a tough Burbank squad this week. In at number four with a 4 0 record, the surprise New Braunfels Canyon Cougars. They take on Smithson Valley this week. Speaking of Smithson Valley, they're in at number three. They're going to take on number four, the Cougars in Spring Branch tonight. In at number two, staying at number two, the Brendan Bears following their huge win over Taft last week. They got a bye week this week. And at number one, staying at number one, the Steel Knights at 4 0. They take on Fort Bend Christian Academy this week week and as I said earlier I think they're number 10 in state right now three Very good team three two and one pretty much no change yeah. the new Braunfels Canyon Cougars out of nowhere yep four and oh they weren't on my radar I don't know if I they, they were, were on, on anybody's your radar that is a fantastic football team and Smithson Valley and Canyon tonight that is going to be one heck of a matchup. Yeah, and another team that's undefeated, uh, the Warren Warriors at 4-0. Oh, they move up to number 7, another surprise team as well in the Northside District. That's right. we got plenty of games right here that you're going to catch on the K-Set Big Game coverage. Yeah, let's run down your streaming schedule for Week 5 of the season, starting off with Madison taking on Brandeis. This is tonight, Thursday night action. Holmes taking on the new school, Sotomayor, tonight at 7 o'clock. How about the Wagner Thunderbirds taking on Kyle Lehman? That wraps up your Thursday night action. Here's your Friday night games. First one, Johnson taking on Roosevelt tomorrow night at 6.50. The Marshall Rams take on the Reagan Rattlers also Friday evening. A game you'll hear me on tomorrow night, Jay Mustangs taking on the Stevens Falcons at 6.50. A big matchup in Northside. Taft taking on a game O'Connor squad. Another big game, the Burbank Bulldogs taking on the Alamo Heights Mules. How about a game I'm going to be calling with Zach Dixon tomorrow night, Falfurias taking on YMLA, the Young Men's Leadership Academy. We mentioned this one earlier, Fort Bend Christian comes into town to take on the Steel Knights. Midland Legacy taking on the Judson Rockets. Friday night action. And outside the market, Lancaster taking on Longview, a big game up in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Huge game out in North Texas. Saturday night action, Lee taking on the Clark Cougars. The Harlan Hawks taking on the undefeated Warren Warriors. And the Jefferson Mustangs taking on the Highlands Owls. Catch all these games on KSAT.com and on the KSAT Big Game Coverage app. Several big games, Sean. Let's start here at Alamo Stadium on Saturday night. The Jefferson Mustangs, a surprise upset right. winner over Brackenridge, a team we're going to watch later tomorrow uh, tonight, taking on a really good Highlands Owls team. That should be a fun one to watch. Yeah, it really should. I think Jeff shocked a lot of people last week by beating Brackenridge, and so uh, they're going to have their hands full Friday. Highlands is a pretty good football team. They're playing some good ball right now. Another one that just reaches out and bites you. 
the Taft Raiders taking on O'Connor. Yeah, that's going to be a good one. O'Connor 2-0 and on the season. How about that? Or in district, I should say. How about that? They've won their last two games, so that's going to be a good one. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to be running down what's going to happen here at Alamo Stadium, Brackenridge, and Harlandale. We're going to do our predictions. What color sock am I wearing? Is it maroon and gold, or is it is it purple, bluish, and gold? <laughs> We're going to find out. We're going to find out. It's Pickleball <laughs> South Texas High School Football Game Day on the KSET Big Game Coverage app and right here on MeTV. It's so easy to love pick and pull. Why? How about the largest inventory in South Texas? How about the ease of finding your part with our interchange and real-time inventory search at pickandpullsa.com? How about an organized yard and maps to find your parts, plus a shuttle? At Pick and Pull, we make it easy to save money on the quality used auto parts you need at a price you can afford. More to pick, less pull for your budget. Now that's Pick and Pull. 2023 San Antonio Gunslinger season tickets are now on sale. Let's go, Gunslingers. Let's go, baby. Reserve your tickets for the original professional football team in San Antonio, the Gunslingers. It's fast-paced, high-flying, over-the-wall professional football. Plus, non-stop entertainment. Affordable family fun is what the San Antonio Gunslingers are all about. To get the best seats and prices, reserve your 2023 San Antonio Gunslingers season tickets now. I'm Rashad Wisdom. Coach showed us what it takes to win on the field and in life. You've got to have power and determination. You've got to be fearless but smart with a focused strategy. That's what it takes to win, and that's what attorney Wayne Wright's got. Wayne Wright lawyers fight to get you the most money possible. When life knocks you down with a car, motorcycle, or 18-wheeler wreck injury, get a champion. Wayne Wright. Don't wait. Call 8. Call Wayne Wright now. 888-8888. Respect. Justice. Demand it. Wayne Wright injury lawyers. And welcome back to Pick and Pull South Texas High School Football Game Day. Gabe Farias and Sean Morris broadcasting high atop Alamo Stadium as we have one of the most iconic views downtown San Antonio as we get ready for Harlandale and Brackenridge here at the Rock Pile. Sean, tell us what's going to happen tonight. Well, we're going to start off tonight talking about the Harlandale Indians coming into this game in District 14-5A Division 2. They come in with a 3-1 and record under their head coach, Albert Torres. They're coming off a 22-20 victory over the Sam Houston Hurricanes last week. They are 3-0 and in district so far this season. On the offensive side for the Indians, quarterback Jacob Saucedo leads the Indians' offense. He's thrown for 807 yards, four touchdowns, but he's also got four interceptions. He's also run for 121 yards and six touchdowns to lead the district. Although the Indians prefer to pass, running back Zion Molina has 239 yards rushing on 62 carries and three touchdowns. With a 3.85 average per carry, Gabe, he's pretty good for a first down after three plays. I may stick with that plan tonight. Oh, yeah. The wide receiver Saxon Langenberg has 12 catches for 333 yards and two scores. That's 28 yards per catch. Pretty good. And wide receivers uh, Pedro Villanzuela, Joseph Esparza, and Rene Renteria will wreak havoc on the Brackenridge DBs all night tonight. Junior offensive lineman Rene Casillas starts, uh, started 10 games as a sophomore last year, and he leads the Indians' offensive line. On the defensive side, the Indians' D-line has got to step up tonight. They've given up 825 yards rushing already this season. Julio Martinez and Aiden Sosa have got to make that happen on the defensive line. Linebacker Nicholas Rodriguez leads the Indian, led the Indians in tackles last year, and he's going to play a big role tonight as well. Defensive back Carlos De La Vega flies all over the field, and he's leading the district right now with three interceptions. The Indians have a good offense. They can put points on the board, but their defense has got to make stops. Their next three games are against Highlands, Alamo Heights, and Burbank. All really good teams, so tonight is a must-win for the Indians. Let's flip over and talk about the other team playing here tonight. The Brackenridge Eagles, they come into this game with an 0-4 record under head coach Larry Norman. They lost a close one. We've been talking about it all night to Jeff last week, 34 to 28. They're 0-3 in district, but they have already had to play Alamo Heights and Burbank, two teams sitting on top of the district right now. On the offensive side, the Eagles get their yards on the ground, 892 yards rushing versus 141 yards passing on the season, and that may play in their favor tonight against a team that cannot do very well against the run. Quarterback Brandon Garcia prefers to run and leads the Eagles with 333 yards and three touchdowns. Running backs Miguel Sanchez and Xavier Camargo both have around 160 yards rushing and three touchdowns each. 
Offensive tackle, Santiago Esquivel at 6'3", 310, and Rogelio Perlada at 6'3", 285, are who these guys are going to run behind all night tonight. Keep an eye on them. On the defensive side, the Eagles, they also give up a lot of yards on the ground, 865 versus 892 already this season. But tonight they face an Indians team that tosses the ball all over the field. Linebacker Isidro Sanchez has great speed, and he's the leader on the Eagles' defense. He had four sacks last season. Defensive backs Elias gonzalez Tijerina, Dominic Camps, and Gino Pena, along with the rest of the Eagles' backfield, have got to be on their toes tonight against a team that likes to throw the ball. The Eagles have got to control the clock tonight, Gabe. they got to keep the Indians' offense off the field as much as they can. Brandon Garcia is going to have to play his best game so far this season if they want to put their first W on the board tonight. Sean, it seems like as we talk each and every week, Zach and I talk about this when we do the Alamo Stadium game. Skelly and I talk about this. Bobby, football can be so simplistic. I think tonight, whoever controls the line of scrimmage, whoever controls time of possession, I think is going to win this football game tonight. Yeah, I agree with you. And I think controlling the line of scrimmage is going to be key, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, one team's given up 892 yards. The other team's given up 865 yards on the ground. I mean, that's a lot of yardage on the ground. So if you can control that line of scrimmage, whether you're on the offensive side and you're opening holes or you're on the defensive side and you're plugging those holes, one of the teams is going to have to do that tonight. And I think whoever does that the most, they're going to control the clock and they're going to come out with the victory. A very misleading 0-4 record for yeah. the Brackenridge Eagles yep. and Larry Norman. That is a that is a solid football team. Yeah, they really are. And, you know, that loss last week I think was probably one they should have won. You you mentioned it before. You said Jeff probably played the best game they've they ever did, played. They did, yeah. Said they were outstanding. Um, I think Brack has a, a shot tonight. They absolutely do. But they're going to have to play without any mistakes tonight. What did you get, one penalty last week for Jeff? Maybe. Maybe wow. one for Jeff. That's incredible. Brack's got to do that tonight if they want to win. Who's going to win tonight, buddy? Let's time for predictions. Oh, man, I've got a close one here. I had to look at my notes and see, but uh, I've got Harlandale winning this one. I think it's going to be pretty close, though, 32 to 24. I've been wrong all season, so that means Brack's probably going to win. All right, so let me see, because <laughs> each week i got to see what color sock that I am wearing. Yeah, i got to make getting, sure. You're stretching oh, much better. i, I got to cry. Yeah, okay, here we go. Oh, my goodness. In an upset, can we can we show the little eagle there? The Brackenridge Eagle pick up their first win of the season tonight, 28 to 24 nice. over the Harlandale Indians. Go Eagles, go! Sean, good job, my friend. Absolutely, man. This it, is a beautiful place. There's it, no place better than the Rock Pile. It's going to be a fun one here tonight. Special thanks to Fred Anthony and 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 uh, Brian Clancy from SAIC for letting us do this show here tonight. Thanks to Willie Hole for taking the time and letting us interview, folks. For the game day crew, for Sean Morris, I'm Gabe Fadias. Don't go anywhere. Bobby Stotzenberger, Andy Skelton, and myself with the call Brackenridge and Harlan Duck coming up next right here on MeTV. It's so easy to love pick and pull. Why? How about the largest inventory in South Texas? How about the ease of finding your part with our interchange in real-time inventory search at pickandpullsa.com? How about an organized yard and maps to find your parts plus a shuttle? At Pick and Pull, we make it easy to save money on the quality used auto parts you need at a price you can afford. More to pick, less pull from your budget. Now that's Pick and Pull. If you don't mean it, it's just words. Well, integrity is basically loyalty to be good when no one is watching, so you should do it because you know it's right. It's high school football time, and John Wayne is right in the middle of the action. At the end of this game, one of the players will be chosen as the John Wayne player of the game. Go to johnwayne.com right now and vote for the player who you think will win. Pick the correct player and you'll win two tickets to a 2023 San Antonio Gunslingers home game. And just for playing, you'll have a chance to win the John Wayne $10,000 home makeover package. Don't fumble. Go to johnwayne.com and vote before the end of the game.
tonight's contest as the Harlandale Indians visit the Brackenridge Eagles here at the beautiful Rock Pile. We've had a few audio issues to start things, but we're back and we're glad to have you aboard here from Alamo Stadium. Bobby Stotzenberg along with Andy Skelton, a historic rivalry that dates way, way back. This used to be many, many years Southside, Brackenridge, and Harlandale. And tonight it's a district contest that is really a situation for Brack where they must win if they're going to stay in the district race. For Harlandale, they have a chance to keep pace with Alamo Heights atop the district standings. Yeah, and again, you know, anytime you're in a district race like this, each week is important because it is the next game up. And Bracken Ridge Eagles, they know that. They know they got the, the work cut out for them tonight. Harlandale's coming in uh, after a win last week, so they got a little momentum on their side. But either way, these guys know that the win is important tonight uh, in the district race. All right, uh, uh, Tell you what, Jacob Saucedo does a great job. Four touchdowns coming in here. You see him right here. He's going to have great pocket presence. He's able to get the ball. You see him got great evasive stuff. He's got an arm to get that ball out there. It makes a play out of nothing, extending the play right there. And, and again, you know, they're going to rely on him tonight, being able to get outside and do some things and, and put some pressure on that Bracken Ridge defense. Youngster is uh, developing. You saw with the long ball, but he is really good with his legs as well. This young man is a scrambler. He's a good athlete. You can see they're blowing past the defense. He is a, a, a dual threat quarterback showing the, the option look here. Yeah, no doubt. And again, this Harlandale team in general is very, very young, Bobby. They only have 11 seniors on their on the rosters. These guys are junior. Here's one of the seniors right here, though, who's also a playmaker. Yeah, Saxon Langenberg. He is uh, the number one target uh, for the uh, Harlandale Indians this year. 333 yards receiving uh, through four games. Yeah, again, he's going to be a, a go-to kind of guy. He's one of their better athletes, I think. They like to go to him in, in key situations. Pre-game down here, I saw him also taking snaps at quarterback, so I don't know if they got him in some sort of a wildcat package as well. But you see right here, once he gets the football, he's able to make things happen with it. Well, this is, again, uh, Andy, a, a very big, important game for Brack. They're 0-4 this season. That's unusual for them. This is a team that's used to being in the playoff hunt. Currently, they're not. They get they have a chance, though, to get themselves in the race if they win tonight. And their offense is centered around their quarterback, who mainly is a, a rushing quarterback for them as we take a look at the impact players. And yeah. we're talking about Brandon Garcia. Yeah, Brandon Garcia is their leading rusher. He has 320-some-odd yards right there. You see, great job here. We see him throwing the screen pass right here. He's able to get the ball out uh, and the high percentage stuff as well. But he is definitely uh, a dual-threat quarterback as well. We're going to see... Uh, for the Eagles tonight and you know again they're going to rely heavily on his legs uh, as we see here getting outside the pocket making something happen and, and trying to go get in the end zone running over people he's got great uh, ability to run over and be you know uh, the kind of contact he's not afraid of contact a pretty elusive guy kind of a running back uh, in the uh, quarterback position defensively uh, they need to get after Jacob Salcedo and this young man here is uh, one that can do it. Yeah, it's Cedro Sanchez, great job coming from his outside linebacker position. He harasses quarterbacks uh, on, the, on the film that we saw the last couple games. He really does a great job playing cloudy to clear, finding the window. There you see his strength uh, and his ability to bring people hard to the ground. And again, one of those deals, he's going to have to have a big night tonight for the Brackenridge Eagles. Yeah, Brack coming off a surprising loss to Jefferson. They uh, are desperate for a win. They need to start their playoff run tonight really is playoffs already if they want to be in the playoffs they got to win tonight should be a great one folks this is a very historic rivalry and we're going to bring it to you live here from the rock pile beautiful alamo stadium it's the high school football showcase on me tv presented by john wayne service company It's high school football time, and John Wayne is right in the middle of the action. At the end of this game, one of the players will be chosen as the John Wayne player of the game. Go to johnwayne.com right now and vote for the player who you think will win. Pick the correct player, and you'll win two tickets to a 2023 San Antonio Gunslingers home game. And just for playing, you'll have a chance to win the John Wayne $10,000 home makeover package. Don't fumble. Go to johnwayne.com and vote before the end of the game. Three, one, two, three. 
I'm Zakari Franklin. On the football field, my job is to do whatever it takes to win. Coach taught us we win the game with the right plan and teamwork. Your future is not a game. After a serious injury from a car truck wreck, how things turn out depends on having the right plan. Wayne Wright lawyers fight to get you the most money possible. Get a fierce, experienced team of lawyers who do what it takes to win. Call Wayne Wright now. 888-8888. Don't wait. Call 8. Respect. Justice. Demand it. Wayne Wright injury lawyers. It's so easy to love pick and pull. Why? How about the largest inventory in South Texas? How about the ease of finding your part with our interchange and real-time inventory search at pickandpullsa.com? How about an organized yard and maps to find your parts plus a shuttle? At pick and pull, we make it easy to save money on the quality used auto parts you need at a price you can afford. More to pick, less pull for your budget. Now that's pick and pull. The BTC app, KSAT and TSB are delivering the best high school football Texas has ever streamed. Guys, you hold on to this one, 85 yards. We have the games, we have the technology, and it's all free. Over 100 games, highlights, and more. Bigger, stronger, better. This season, expect more. The BGC app. Experience the next generation of coverage. Powered by the Children's Hospital of San Antonio. I'm starting to set here at uh, beautiful Alamo Stadium as we continue with our coverage of this District 14 5A Division II contest. You see the Indian fans, they always show up in force to support their team. As we go to the sidelines and our third reporter on this broadcast tonight, Gabe Farias with the Harlandale Indians. Keys to victory brought to you by KLeagueAuto.com. All right, Andy, I'll let you take this until we get Gabe. Aboard. All right, Harlandale tonight, they, hey, they have to have a big game from their quarterback, Salcedo. Uh, they're going to have to step up in their run defense. They have a little lax. Uh, that's an area they can improve. And, and, again, don't look past Brackenridge. This is the next game towards the district championship and making the playoffs. Yeah, they have Highlands next week. And if you look at the 0-4, you might be a little worried about it. Uh, maybe Harlandale looking past Brack. Let's go now to the uh, home team, uh, the Brackenridge Eagles, what do they need to do tonight, Andy? Well, they're going to have to control the clock. They're going to have to shorten the game, keep the Indians' offense off the field. In a big game from a big offensive line, they're averaging about 275, 280 up front from their offensive line. Uh, so they need to have Brandon Garcia, their quarterback, get behind those bigs and do some work. And keep it close going into the fourth quarter. Give yourself a chance to win this thing uh, at the end of the game here. All righty, folks, we'll take a break. We'll have the opening kickoff in just a moment from Alamo Stadium. This is the High School Football Showcase, presented by John Wayne Service Company on MeTV. North Park Lexus of San Antonio and North Park Lexus of Dominion have over 350 used cars in stock, plus over 100 L-certified vehicles available. Each L-certified vehicle receives a comprehensive 161-point inspection and is backed with an industry best unlimited mileage warranty, roadside assistance, and two years of complimentary maintenance. Visit either North Park Lexus location to select one. For your high school student or graduate, North Park Lexus, proud supporters of high school athletics. San Antonio's new country leader. Oh, when it rains, it pours. Alamo City Proud. If I didn't love you, I'd be good by now. Mornings with when Frito you and Katie. Got your hands up, you're rocking in. Your hometown country station. San Antonio's new country I'm leader. Y100. I'm very disappointed in Greg Abbott and what he's done for Texas over these last several years. Texas is 41st in school funding. 
students have overworked and underpaid teachers, and that's not gonna equal a great outcome for them. It feels like kids don't matter, teachers don't matter. Beto O'Rourke will turn it around. Fully fund our public schools. Invest in our kids and the future of Texas. We are moments away from kickoff here at Alamo Stadium. Brackenridge, the home team against the visiting Harlandell Indians. Bobby Stotzenberger along with Andy Skelton. Gabe Farias will join us here momentarily as the uh, Brackenridge Eagles and coach uh, Larry Norman, he knows this is a must win for his team. This is such a wild district race every year, Andy. It, it, it's, it's never really over in this district race. I think most people believe Alamo Heights is probably the uh, best team in the district in playoff bound, but after that, it, it can be a real scramble. So you're not out of it, even though you're 0-3 in di district play at, at, with Brackenridge. Well, especially in the district that's this big as far as team goes. But again, you know, every win, uh, Gay Fries says it often, every win in a district like this is like gold. You want to try to grab it when you can, even though it, you know, it's after you know three games that you've gotten beat. You come out, you play this game as hard as you could play it tonight and, and let the rough end drag, so to speak, here. But... Um, Harlan is going to start off getting the football. Brack's going to kick off to him here momentarily. And again, they're going to have to have a big defensive stand right off the bat. Real quick, a team compare here uh, before the uh, kickoff as we take a look at it. These two teams, uh, a little more balance from uh, Harlandale, 328 yards of uh, offense per game. Uh, for Brackenridge, they are very run heavy, as you see on our stat. We're ready to go here from Alamo Stadium. Kicking it off will be Nicholas Jimenez for the uh, Eagles as we are underway. Uh -oh. And they start off with an onside kick, the ball bouncing around. And the boy, Harlandale let that go a little further than I thought that they would. And it is recovered, however, by Nicholas Rodriguez. And the Indians will have the ball first as we begin play with the Indians first and 10. There you look at the off, uh, offensive line first, Reyes, Menchaca, Ibarra, Reyes, and Casillas. Jacob Saucedo, he our featured player in the uh, pregame. Quarterback Molina, the running back, he's pretty good one too. Renteria, Langenberg, Esparza, and Val Valenzuela are the receivers. Yeah, Hollerdale's got some weapons out there to choose from, and it's going to be interesting to see how Saucedo interacts with these guys tonight. Our first look at uh, Jacob Saucedo as he sends a man in motion and hands it off to Molina, and he is stuffed in the backfield for no gain, as that's a good start there for the Brackenridge defense. As we look at the starters, Book Walter, Baez, and Garcia up front, Hernandez, Garza, Sanchez, and Navarro, the linebackers. Uh, Robertson Pena, Gonzalez and Pettis in the secondary for the Brackenridge Eagles. Second down and long for the Indians. Looking near side, this ball is completed to Joseph Esparza for a gain of about six, setting up a third down now for the Indians. Yeah, right off the bat, great job by number 34 from the Brackenridge Eagles on that first play. Comes in there and tackle for a loss, Ronald Navarro. Uh, with his first tackle for the night here. Jacob Saucedo now facing a third down and six. They need to get to the Brack 47 yard line. Brackenridge showing blitz right here as the Indians look to the sideline, Bobby. Yeah, I tell you what, I like the start where they, they're they going for broke, man. Started the game with an Why onside not, man, kick. Right? Why not? It's time. Saucedo in pressure now, scrambling. Look out, he gets crushed. He got sandwiched and gets up very slowly there. He did get it away incomplete, but after a failed onside kick attempt, that's a really big stop for the Eagle defense. I'll tell you what, this is what I like. They're bringing pressure this time. They're bringing it from up top. You're going to see coming in there is number 24 doing a great job in pursuit. That's Carlos Hernandez. He's the one that really forced that errant pass right there by Salcedo. And so it's going to be uh, Gino Pena as the return man for the uh, Brackenridge Eagles. Hollandell with a three and out to get things started. Hey, Salcedo hey, is also a punter, so be aware of that as he can throw it from back there if necessary. He takes the snap and will in fact run it away. Pena to settle under this one at the 19. He's going to try to return it, but a lot of Indians, he gets surrounded and will be dropped at the 15-yard line. So first and 10 for Brackenridge, their first offensive possession as we take a look at the starters. There you see uh, up front uh, with Campos at the tight end, and then Peralta, Robles, Esquivel, and Estrada along with Perez. Quarterback is Brandon Garcia, run-heavy quarterback, Maureen 
the running back. Of course, they had a quarterback battle at the beginning of the season, but Garcia has emerged. And then you saw the receivers as well. So first down and 10, Brackenridge Eagles moving left to right. As Dominique Garcia, or Brandon, excuse me, Brandon Garcia, on first down and 10, is going to throw out into the uh, left flat and is caught and wheeling around to about the 15-yard uh, line is Dominique Campos with the short catch. Yeah, Dominique Campos, great job right there, high percentage pass, and again, first drive's important. You want to set up a second down and mid if you can after that first down situation. Maureen is the running back. Garcia, the quarterback, second down for the Eagles. Maureen's first carry is a nosedive into the ground. Not, not much there. In fact, no gain on the play as we take a look at the Indian defense. Sosa, Castaneda, Martinez, and Cifuentes up front. Galvez, Rodriguez, and Vasquez, the linebackers. The corners, Cantu and Ponseca. And then De La Vega and Garcia in the sa uh, safeties for the Harlemdale Indians. So a passing down here, Andy, for Brandon Garcia. The tackle made by Jaden Castaneda that time. Defensive end, great job bringing up the third down situation right here. Third and eight now for the Eagles. You got four over three over there. Garcia has trips to the left side. He's going to look that way, scramble that way, and get oh. sacked. The ball comes loose. He falls on it to prevent a really big play. It was a big play as it was. Nicholas Rodriguez with the sack there for Harlandale. So Brack, not a very good first possession. That's a great job by the Harlandale defense in there. Let's look at the replay. There's about three or four. Well, no replay, but great job by them getting in there and stripping the ball. Huge tackle for loss here. Here we go. Again, you got... Brandon Garcia trying to make something happen, looking down the field, but great push by the D-line getting in there. And big old number 30 coming in there. That's going to be Nicholas Rodriguez with Mike, the forced fumble. Michael Palomino is the return man for the Indians. Brack, not enough players on the field. They're in trouble. They're going to probably have to burn a timeout or take a penalty, one of the two, as the play clock goes to zeros. And here is the flag and I don't believe they took a timeout they're going to go ahead that's not much of a, a penalty, from, penalty. Yeah, yeah, yeah from there it's not Half much the distance to the goal there so again folks thanks for joining us here tonight on uh, me TV as we uh, have Harlandale and Brackenridge next week we'll move to Saturday again as we will have uh, Churchill taking on Roosevelt in a district contest to begin our October coverage So a short penalty, half the distance to the goal. We just had to adjust the, the game clock, Bobby, back to eight minutes and 50 seconds after that delay of game. Brendan Garcia, the quarterback, is also the punter. They're still having trouble getting the clock where they want it to be. Hey guys, good evening. <laughs> Hello, Gabriel. Dave Padias joining us now from the sidelines. Fourth down and punt for Brack. High snap, rushes on uh -oh. low liner. Somehow he got that one away, nearly hit an Indian along the way. And all things considered, Andy, that was not a bad punt by Garcia because he was lucky to get it off. I mean, I'm not so sure that they didn't get a hand on I mean, that It came off kind of weird here to see if we get the replay because they had a heck of a push up the middle by Harlandale right here. I didn't see a yeah, hand no, on this got, I think it was just he a He was forced to punt. kick it away. You're right, yeah. Dave. He kicked a knuckleball there. Well, the Indians certainly have had the field position uh, battle here. They recovered an onside kick to begin the game. Now a short punt after a defensive stop, and the Indians here... Andy in point blank range, and if you're Coach uh, Albert Torres, you know you got to cash in when you have these opportunities. Well, you got to get your bigs up front, get them lathered up. I'd give the ball to 21 Molina, even though we got spread set here right here. But you get those bigs up front, get lathered up, and get them into this thing here. Rack off sides, free, free play. play. Salcedo going to throw one deep up the right side, and it's incomplete, but a smart decision to go ahead and let it fly because the Eagles were off sides. You know, deflected by Gino, Gino Pena right there, but wouldn't have mattered either way if he would have picked that. And again, if, Gabe, if you're Bracker. Offsides. Oh. Number 85, five-yard penalty. 
Repeat personnel. <laughs> wow, that, that blew my ears out, guys. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. wake up. Here we go. <laughs> First and five. Salcedo going to run it this time. Has a hole on the right side, and Salcedo is near the first first down of the game. He's right at the sticks. Uh, good job. That's what they need to do right there. Go ahead and get you some, you know, you have a, a first and five right there. Why not? Again, Jacob Salcedo, you see his numbers right here coming in. 54% completion, almost 800 yards coming into this thing, but he does have six. There you see six rushing touchdowns, so he is more than capable with his legs to get up in there and do a little quarterback uh, power, quarterback lead, things like that. Salcedo has Molina to his right. He's going to fake the handoff to him and then flip it out to the uh, Saxon Langenberg with his first catch. Will go nowhere with that one. So good D by the Eagles. Yeah, they were pursuing that all the way. I mean, they didn't. I mean, they telegraphed that a little bit, and they were. They know that 84 is a, a dude, and they're going to be sure that they're going to have a couple bodies rallying to him. Brings up second down and long. Well, this is a pretty young uh, Harlandale team, Andy, but Saxon uh, Langenberg, a senior receiver for the Harlandale Indians. One of their 11 seniors. Saucedo on second down and 10. Play action, pumps, and then fires it to the uh, right Got corner. It. Up in the air and caught. What a great grab for the Indian touchdown. Pedro Valenzuela gets the Indians on the board 17 yards. Well, you see here uh, Valenzuela had him Defensive guy beat from the get right here. Let's see. So I'll say pump fakes right here. He was going to him all the way right there. In coverage was number eight. That's Jacob Robertson. It wasn't bad, Andy. He was right yeah. there with just a, a great right over pass. The right over the fingertips, yeah. but just enough. And Valenzuela, pretty, pretty good size uh, receiver there. Goes up and catches it at the high point. For the touchdown as Nicholas Rodriguez will try to add the extra point for the Indians who have the early lead. This kick is a low liner, but it is through and it is seven to nothing, Harlandell. 7.19 to go, first quarter of play. You're watching the High School Football Showcase presented by John Wayne Service Company on MeTV. Do you like going fast? Because I do. Hi, this is Jeb Burden with the John Wayne Service Company number 27 race car. I'm encouraging you to join the Fast Track to the Trades with John Wayne Service Company. Enroll in the John Wayne Academy for technical excellence today and change your life with a career in HVAC, plumbing, or electrical in just 90 days. Get paid to learn a trade. Take it from me. Get on the Fast Track to the Trades and call John Wayne Service Company, 293-6700. I'm Oscar Cardenas. In football, we fight hard to make it happen. That's what makes us winners. 18-wheeler or company vehicle wreck injury put you on the sidelines? Get a winner to fight for you. A lawyer with grit and determination who will not stop until you get justice and all the money you deserve. And that's Wainwright Injury Lawyers, so don't wait. Call 8. Call Wainwright Injury Lawyers. 888-8888 now. Want to win? You know who to call. That's right, Wainwright. Respect. Justice. Demand it. Wainwright Injury Lawyers. Harlandell has had the great field position as they have capitalized there. Andy, three plays and 27 yards on the scoring drive, taking a 111 off the clock. Pedro Valenzuela with a 17-yard reception. From Jacob Salcedo, good start for the Indians. As they will kick it off. And this one is going to bounce, and it will roll into the end zone. And I tell you what, uh, Jacob Chavez took a bit of a chance there, not getting a little closer to that football, but it does, in fact, roll into the end zone for the touchback. I'll tell you, Brandon Garcia and the Brackenridge Eagles need to come out right here, and they need to respond to the score by the Harlandale Indians right here. And Scully, they got a big physical offensive line. they got a great running game. they just got to attack that defensive front for Harlandale. They have not been great against the run this year. They just need to go at them and... Right. Eat some of this clock up. Get on the board. Went on first down. That's it. In case either of you guys care, I've got all of my steps out of the way for my Fitbit for the next two weeks. Yeah, just so you know. A long climb here at Alamo Stadium. Garcia, first down and 10. will keep it. Harlandell sniffing that one out. 
And nowhere to go on the play as Aiden Sosa makes the stop for the Indians. A gain of maybe one or two there for Garcia. Good job by Sosa coming in there and again making, making people miss. And minimal gain. It's very important that Brackenridge maintains some level of offense. They are averaging 19 and a half points a game. They're giving up 36 points a game in the 0-4 start. Big hole on the right side, but it closes quickly, and the Indians converge. And nowhere to go that time for Julio Maureen. What a, it looked like it was open there for just a second, but the uh, white jersey surrounded him quickly. Well, they had him outnumbered to the, this side over here. Number 23 you'll see coming in for Harlandale, Nathaniel Vasquez. Nothing doing right there, nowhere to go. No gain, tackle for no gain right there, and then the rest of the Calvary shows up for Harlandale. Harlandale has uh, scored 92 points, given up 85, so 23 average and 21.3 average. That's really skewed because of the opening season loss to Veterans Memorial. Third down and long for the Eagles. And scrambling left is Garcia. He'll tuck and run. Will he get there? He'll try to finish it strong. He's short of the first down. And we may have our first pick and pull collision. I'll tell you what, Nicholas Rodriguez, number 30, has been all over the field for the Indian defense. So he's tracking he's tracking Garcia all the way right here. Great angle right here. Finishing up right there, putting a little waka, a little high, but still put a little good pop on him for a pick and pull collision. Brings up fourth down and short, and Brackenridge bringing their punting unit on. Well, I'll tell you, they onside kick to begin the game. <laughs> I, you know. Well, they make fake punt it here. Yeah, I'm thinking the same thing. You're going to have to do something to try to get that possession come up on a possession and get some points on the board. The here. Indians are going to send uh, Michael Palomino back for the uh, punt. Brandon Garcia, again, the quarterback, scheduled to punt, and he will, in fact, boot it away. End over end punt, and is picked up on the hop by Molina. I mean, excuse me, Pal Palomino. Palomino races like a horse over to the 48-yard uh, line. Nice wow. there. Is that a play on words, Bob? Yeah. Is that a, yeah. Yeah. Is that a, is that a pun? Game? Was that a pun? Is that a pun? I don't know if that's Knowledge. a pun. It's a play on words. <laughs> yeah. It's not a conundrum. It's not. Gabe, yeah, uh, this is Brax got to bow, bow their necks right here, or yeah. this could get out of hand in a hurry. I'm kind of shocked, Skelly. They didn't go for it on fourth and one. I mean, when you're 0 4, you need to do yeah. something to light a fire and to light a spark. And that's kind of what uh, what Bobby was talking about. You start the game with an onside kick, fourth and one, maybe take you a shot and try to get one yard and keep the, keep the chains and the clock moving. So I'll say to back out for the third possession. Another good field position situation for the Indians. He hands it off to Molina. Big hole. And he'll take it down Main Street and ahead for a gain of 12 to the Brack 40-yard line. Yeah, Zion Molina. Great job. Comes in here with 221 yards on 62 carries. Good, tough, punishing junior running back. He is the son of the defense coordinator, Brandon Molina. Coach's kid, so he's a good old hard-nosed kid. Been around football his whole life. He's going to get another carry here. He's hit in the backfield, but able to still get positive yards at that time. Yeah, we're going to have a too many men on the field penalty for Brackenridge, I think. Well, again, I'd do a heavy, heavy dose. 21 right now, Bobby, because he's getting up in there, busting it up. Well, they're going to sort this one out. But uh, start coming into this uh, fourth week of district play, Harlandale and Alamo Heights both at 3 0. Highlands and Burbank at 2 and 1. And then you got Sam Houston, McCollum, Edison, and Lanier, and Jefferson all at one and two. And so despite the poor start, Brack's still in this thing, even though they're 0-3. But if they fall to 0-4, it's pretty much over. Give me one more on the defense, five-yard penalty. Now, is that too many men on the field, Skelly? No, first down. Same, same, ends up playing the same way. Legal okay. substitution, illegal participation. You know, not where you're supposed to be when you should be when you're allowed to do, allowed to be kind of. What, what would be illegal participation for me? If you stepped on the field right now. Or if I took my shirt off and I had a tank top on, maybe. That too. Okay, just want to make sure. So I'll say it with an empty backfield, gonna throw, late rush, and he'll chunk one deep. He has a man open and is caught. Touchdown, Harlandale Indians, wide open. What a throw. Was Joseph Esparza. That was too easy for a 35-yard strike. And I'll tell you what, he came from all the way to the other side of the field here. Let's look at the replay, a little loco route right here. Good job by Sacedo extending the play. He knows 
where Esparza is going to end up. He just throws it out there. Great job by Esparza running underneath it. Kind of Salcedo did a great job of throwing him open at the end of that. So Harlandell with a two score lead here. Swinging gate. In the first quarter. So the uh, Indians on for the extra point. Two scores in three drives. Nicholas Rodriguez straight toes it and is through to make it 14 to nothing Harlandale. We have 4.55 to go here in the first quarter of play. You're watching the high school football showcase presented by John Wayne Service Company on BTV. The Kaleg Auto Group, the North Park Blue Bonnet family of dealerships has in stock over 2,500 pre-owned vehicles and over 1,800 new vehicles in stock or in transit. Choose from cars, trucks, and SUVs, domestic or import. Every vehicle includes our low posted price and our no-hassle 72-hour return policy. So no matter where you live, we have a convenient location for your next vehicle purchase. The Kaleg Auto Group, the North Park Blue Bonnet family of dealerships. Central Builders is an award-winning general contractor headquartered in San Antonio. Their construction projects include large-scale remodels, expansions, and ground-up construction. Their comprehensive service offerings, along with dedication to quality workmanship, make them one of the top contractors in the city. Central Builders is a proud sponsor of Texas Sports Productions. Call Central Builders at their San Antonio office at 210-590-0235 or visit them online at centralbuilders.net. The Harlandale Indians, two plays, 52 yards on that scoring drive. Jacob Salcedo with his second touchdown pass. He found Joseph Esparza wide open that time, Andy. And the uh, Eagles are going to have to step it up here pretty quick to stay in this game as these kickoff is returned from the 15 out to the 25-yard line. They'll mark him at the 27. Yep, Sax Saxon Langenberg, 84 again. There you see him. He's He's all over the field for the Indians, and why not? He's pretty, pretty decent little athlete out there getting after it, and they, you know, going to. We'll see him catch a couple passes before the night's over. Statistically, that's what their statistics tell us. So, again, one of their, one of their go-to guys as well. But you're right, Bracken Ridge is going to have to come out here right now. Quarterback Brandon Garcia, and company, they need to find a way. And again, Gabe winning on first down, staying out of third and long. Uh, that's going to be huge here and, and to try to shorten this game a little bit and stay close in the fourth quarter is what we said I, in the keys. I don't want to over dramatize things here, Andy, but I think this drive is the season for Bracken Ridge right here. They got they got to get they got to get a score right here to, to, to maintain some semblance of competitiveness in this in this 14 5A district. They're going to run Maureen up the middle. He there breaks it and he'll have a first down to the sideline and out of bounds at the 48. There you go. Nothing wrong with that little Little running back lead play, had a lead blocker up in or nothing doing. Great spin move to get outside and pick up a big chunk here, move the chains and get you some momentum going. You know, we did the Brad Jeff game last week and Maureen had a big game. He's a big physical running back and that's a big physical offensive line, Andy. What do you say? Do what you do. Get behind that offensive line, pick up chunks of yards. Under five to go here in the first quarter. 14 to nothing, Harlandale, Maureen again. That's twice he's tried to kind of bounce Andy, and that, that doesn't seem to be the, the thing to do against this defense. They're pretty quick up front. And I'll tell you, Jaden Castaneda, number 66, and then you got number 30, or excuse me, 20, right, right in there in the mix as well, Carlos De La Vega. Again, they're penetrating. They're getting down the line of scrimmage that time. That could have been a lot worse uh, than just a no gain on that, but they were able to get back to the original line of scrimmage. Brackwood trips right. Single receiver left. Second and ten for the Eagles. Sprint out. Garcia firing it. Had a man in the flat, but he overshoots uh, Jalen Guetta, who was open. Well, Nicholas Rodriguez, number 30. Yeah, he's been everywhere. For Harlandale, the linebacker, he was in his face. And again, that's not a lot, but he took away the passing lane. Uh, nowhere to go with the football. And brings up third down and long here, where you don't want to be his offensive coordinator if you can help it. Well, it's early, but he stood out. He may be a candidate already for our John Wayne player of the game. You can vote for it. John Wayne, player of the game. Go to johnwayne.com. If your guest matches ours, you win two tickets to see the San Antonio Gunslingers Arena Football. Nice fake there by Garcia, and he'll run for big yardage as he will take this one to the house. 
What a fake. He carried it out. And a 52-yard score is the result. That is huge and very much needed right there. Great job by Brandon Garcia. We've seen him before. He is the leading rusher for the uh, Rocket Ridge Eagles watch here. Watch how Let's long this fake lasts. And watch the defense. Where'd who go? Great job getting out the back door. Got some blocking downfield right there. Then he hooks it up in high gear. Touchdown, Brack. He really sold that jet sweep. He yeah. sold it. Great fake, great mess right there. That's what it's all about. And again, has some help on the outside out there, getting some blocking too to free him up and break it open. And Nicholas Jimenez comes on to try the extra point. Eagles on the board, bad snap. It was floated up there. And the kick's good anyway. So if we have a new game, it's Harlandale 14 and Brackenridge 7. You're watching the High School Football Showcase presented by John Wayne Service Company on MeTV. Twenty twenty three San Antonio Gunslinger season tickets are now on sale. Let's go Gunslingers. Let's go baby. Reserve your tickets for the original professional football team in San Antonio. The Gunslingers. It's fast paced. High flying over the wall professional football. Plus nonstop entertainment. Affordable family fun is what the San Antonio Gunslingers are all about. To get the best seats and prices reserve your twenty twenty three San Antonio Gunslingers season tickets now. I'm Rashad Wisdom. Coach showed us what it takes to win on the field and in life. You've got to have power and determination. You've got to be fearless but smart with a focused strategy. That's what it takes to win, and that's what attorney Wayne Wright's got. Wayne Wright lawyers fight to get you the most money possible. When life knocks you down with a car, motorcycle, or 18-wheeler wreck injury, get a champion. Wayne Wright. Don't wait. Call 8. Call Wayne Wright now. 888-8888. Respect. Justice. Demand it. Wayne Wright Injury Lawyers. Gabe, you said if they needed it, and they got it. Four plays and 73 yards. Was that the season? We don't know, but uh, that certainly was a good drive, Andy, as Brandon Garcia races for 52 yards. And that's what he's done so far this season. Continues to do it on that drive right there. His bracket's ready to kick. They, they kicked an onside last time they kicked it here. Let's see if they uh, try some trickeration here as they shift the guy over. Nicholas Jimenez. Harlandale. With five across up front. Play clock is already down to five. They got to hurry with the kick. And it's a short kick that's going to bounce. It's always dangerous when that happens, but it is uh, secured by the Indians. Jacob Fonseca comes up with a recovery. Well, if you're the Indians, you can see Brax come to play. They're a kind of a desperate team right now, Andy. They have to win this game. And Harlandale cannot let off the pedal. Well, again, Coaches always preach, you do what we can do. We're not worried about the other team. Let's worry about us. Coaches are over there between series, coaching up their offense, coaching up their defense, making adjustments, fixing some things. Uh, and again, that's the chess match that is high school football. And again, Harlandale just needs to go back to work as they go no, no back right here. Yeah, they've been empty quite a few yep. times here for Jacob Salcedo, which tells you their confidence in this young man. But coming into the backfield is uh, Molina. They fake it to him. Salcedo with a great fake, and he'll carry it out to the left side and pick up a first down and a gain of 13. And again, fakes the ball to Molina that time and pulls it out and comes out the back here. I don't think that was a read necessarily here. That yeah, might have been. That might have been a read all the way right there, actually. One-on-one -on -one against linebackers. Goes and picks up a first down on first down right here. Tell you what, Salcedo's been impressive so far, Andy. Yes, he has. And again, they're... Back to the no back open look right here, three by two. So Sato gonna flare it out, and it is caught. Nice move at the line of scrimmage by Esparza. Hits the sideline, shows some speed there as he goes into Brack territory with a Harlandale Indian first down. Good high percentage passing game right there. Little two-man slip screen on the outside. Good job by 85 blocking up there. That was uh, Pedro Valenzuela. He's already got a touchdown tonight. And being unselfish on that one as Esparza goes off limping right there, maybe cramping already. Right at about 200 yards a game passing this season are the Indians. And they've improved dramatically since the opening season loss. Another flare pass out to the right side this time, and Michael Palomino will do the rest. There's a flag along the way as he's near the uh, first down. Yeah, they're going to get uh, Langer, Langenberg. Number 84 with the hole. I thought he did a pretty good job, but right at the end, if we get the replay, you'll see him extend enough to get the line judges uh, view right here. But 
84 is out here blocking in space, right blocking there. in space right here, and then they're going to get right at the end yes. right there. They see that arm come up, and he throws the flag right there. Great camel work, picking that up right there. That's going to come back. Pretty big penalty there against the Indians. Holding number 84 offense, 10 yard penalty. Repeat the down. And again, I'm not making excuses, Gabe, but that's a long time for a wide receiver to hold a block and kind of move his feet without getting the hold. Yeah, speaking of wide receivers, we're going to be talking with Alfred Anthony and Fred Anthony, the new SAIST executive athletic director. He was a pretty good wide receiver in his time, former Harlandale principal. He's the guy that I played with at McCullum High School, and he's the new SAIC executive athletic director. So we'll be chatting with him, and, and I'll ask him his thoughts on wide receivers holding. How's yeah. that? Please set the clock at three minutes. Three They've been minutes. having a few clock issues here at Alamo Stadium tonight. Yeah. Well, and Fred Anthony, you, you mentioned it, uh, Gabe. He's got uh, deep uh, connections to the uh, Harlandale community as, as a student and then as an administrator, but now coming over here to uh, SAISD. Well, I'll tell you what, he, he joins a great crew. When you, when you talk about guys like, like Brian Clancy that, that, that are already a part of this SAISD uh, athletics administration, man, it's, it's, it's a strong group out here. First and 16, so I'll say the deep drop. Let's it fly, and this one overthrows everybody. Yeah. He was about to get rocked. Yeah, not this time. Trying to hit Saxon Langenberg again. And again, he had pressure coming right now. Here's a replay. He had to get rid of it, as we see coming from the right side right here. Even though that was an overthrow. That's Pena coming on a, on a secondary blitz, man, and Skelly, had to get rid of it. Boy, he chunked that a long ways, my friend. Well, I was too if I saw a purple jersey coming to my ear hole. <laughs> but... <laughs> Just saying. He's got a good arm is what I'm getting at. He, Joseph, Genetics, man, tells us self-preservation. Jacob, Sa Jacob Saucedo, nice arm strength shown there as he hands it to Molina. Runs low to the ground there. Back to about the original line of scrimmage. And Harlandale's known to have just a few quarterbacks with good arms here in the past. I know that uh, one name comes to mind several years ago, Karoti, but it seems like Bob, Andy, every year they got a kid who can throw the heck out of it. They do a great job down there coaching these kids up, man. They got a lot of pride, and they play hard, man. I'll tell you what. Uh, You're never going to play harder than Harlem. No. Ever. They they get after you. Third down and 11. Saucedo has a trips left. He looks that direction. Then back across the middle as a man caught at the 20-yard line for another Indian first down. This time is Palomino. That's another catch for him. Good ball by Saucedo, man. I'll tell you what. He got on top of that ball, drove it. And again, I always say it, when a ball's on target and on time, man, you can't defend it. And that was a great job hauling it in for a critical first down right there. Skelly, as he was taking a shot, too, stood in the pocket, delivered a bullet as he was taking a hit. Four wides here for Saucedo. Molina flanked to his right. Little pump. Jump to the end zone, to the corner, and it is, what a grab. That is a touchdown. And right there That's on the two. fingertips, Pedro Valenzuela. That was a heck of a throw, my friend. What a throw by Saucedo for another touchdown. His third touchdown pass of the first quarter. Again, it, it's just timing all the way right there. He puts it out there in 85 right here. Right off the fingertips. Great job being aware of where he was in the back of the end zone right there. Skelly, two different passes. We'll see if they run this way. Two different passes, a bullet over the middle, and then the touch from Salcedo. This kid's a this kid's a heck of a quarterback. And are we kicking straight on here, by the way? I do. I like the straight toe kicker, yes. man. The old, the old toe poke. Yeah, man. Shades of uh, Mark Mosley. One step and go. Get it off. Rodriguez. Straight toes it through for the third time as Harlandale 21 and Brackenridge 7. We're late in the first quarter of play in the high school football showcase. Presented by John Wayne Service Company continues on Me TV. If you don't mean it, it's just words. Well, integrity. It's basically loyalty to be good when no one is watching, so you should do it because you know it's right.
the Kaleg Auto Group, the North Park Blue Bonnet family of dealerships has in stock over 2,500 pre-owned vehicles and over 1,800 new vehicles in stock or in transit. Choose from cars, trucks, and SUVs, domestic or import. Every vehicle includes our low posted price and our no-hassle 72-hour return policy. So no matter where you live, we have a convenient location for your next vehicle purchase. The Kaleg Auto Group, the North Park Blue Bonnet family of dealerships. Yeah, guys, Gabe Buddy is here with the new executive athletic director for the San Antonio Independent School District, Alfred Anthony. You know, when they told me that Alfred Anthony got the job, I'm like, who's that? I've known you as Friday. We played high school football at McCullum. Uh, Coach, talk about your, your, your time early on here in SAISD. Well, I'll tell you this much. Spending 27 years at, at Harland ISD, I was like, you try to do a lot of compare and contrast. And I tell the great people at Harlandale, but equally great people here at SISD. I just feel like, you know what? I crossed the street and came to a, a place that's just as great, if not better, and really, really enjoy being here in SISD. Um, like I said, um, being part of something new here, so new superintendent bounds, with the athletics. Our coaches we'll here are tremendous. You know, some some great, great things happen here in the athletic department here in SISD. Yeah, and, and it starts with you know a guy that, that's working with you right now, Brian Clancy. You got great coaches, great administrators. Talk about the staff and and, and how they're really molding this athletic department. You know, uh, when you, you mentioned Brian, and uh, you know we have. Brian Clancy, we have Jerry Gonzalez, you have, we have, you know, we have Malachi Nellum, you have Courtney Davis, you have Barbara Weiss, I mean, you, you know, Mike Bettas, I mean, to say that's my team, you know, every day I'm like, wow, well, what a blessing, you know, because you know, you know as well as I knew, Gabe, we're only as good as those people around us, and to have them right there leading the way with me, uh, it, it, I couldn't be more blessed and, uh, in, in this position, knowing that they're right here, knowing SASD as well as they do, and giving me an opportunity to serve with along, along their side. Fred, I appreciate it right quick. I know you're conflicted. Harlandale or Brack? Who's going to win tonight? <laughs> you know what? We're rooting for Brack, okay? But right now, right now, the, the, the score's not in our favor, but you know what? Uh, Brack is a second-half team, so you know what? Uh, but, you know, go Eagles. All right, there you go. Hey, you heard it first, guys. Fred Anthony said go Eagles. Back to you. All right. Well, that, that must have been tough after being the principal at Harlandale for nine years to come out on television and say go well, Eagles. He, he knows how to be politically correct. <laughs> Just put it that way, you know. Maureen with a first down run. Looks like Brack's got a little yeah. momentum offensively all of a I like, sudden. I like the way Molina runs the football right there. Went and got him another first down for Brackenridge here. So here is uh, Brandon Garcia. Again with a uh, pistol set. We'll throw a quick hitter, and that, that was a little bit low and behind his intended target that time, Caleb Contreras, but he was open. Good idea. Yeah, they ran a little, uh, little RPO look right there. There you see Caleb Contreras, and just a little bit behind him on the slant route, but he was open. Man, if, they, if Brack could just complete a few passes, Andy, uh, you, Garcia's a good enough runner. He can definitely hurt you with his legs. If he could add a few completed passes, that would help this offense so much. Well, and that's a high percentage pass that they just threw right there as well, so look for them to come back to that. There's nothing wrong with that. Just got to put a little bit more on the mark there. Second and 10 now, Garcia. Hands to Maureen. No, he keeps it, and he's going to throw this one complete. Nice job of getting that one to his receiver. Caught at the 45. And out to about the uh, 46 that time. The Ariel, flag down. Uh, Aurelio Garcia with the catch. There is a flag, gain of five if it stands. That was great pressure applied by Isaiah Flores of Harlandale, getting to Brandon Garcia, making force him to release that ball probably a little earlier than he wanted to. An illegal man downfield here, guys. Probably, yeah, because you know Molina, I mean, excuse me, Garcia is such a runner. His offensive line probably released out. I don't know. We'll check the call here. Ineligible receivers downfield. Five yard penalty, repeat second down. I said receivers, not receiver. Well, if it's an ineligible receiver, then they're not a receiver. I don't know why they use that word receiver when they say ineligible. That's kind of a oxymoron. oxymoron? Redundant, redundant. Okay. Just ineligible. Ineligible lineman downfield. Ineligible big in downfield. It's just me. I'm an offensive line guy, so. This first quarter. Moving along rather slowly. 21-7, the Indians with the lead. Second and 15 for Brack. Trips to wide right and a timeout by the uh, Brackenridge Eagles called by Larry Norman. Timeout, Brackenridge. First right, we, timeout this half. We got a big uh, schedule ahead on uh, 
big game coverage as uh, this is our first uh, of many that we will uh, broadcast over the uh, weekend. This is our television broadcast. And we have streaming as well available on KSAT's big game coverage app and uh, KSAT.com. Uh, the best high school free high school football coverage anywhere in the state of Texas, including several games tonight on big game coverage. Andy, a, a timeout here by Brack. It doesn't seem like they're going to have a lot of room for error in this game because it, it appears, at least early on, that they're going to have a very difficult time stopping Harlan Bell. When again, you know, taking your timeouts when you need them as opposed to hanging on to them, you don't get them, you know, you don't get a refund for them. You've heard me say that before. And try to get it right. You got second down and 15 right here. You, you don't have to get all this back at one time, you know, get you a good chunk of it right here and make sure everybody's on the same page. And it wasn't a bad timeout taken by Coach Norman right there. Brandon Garcia, 65-pound senior quarterback. Takes the snap, keeps it. This is the play they scored on, but not this time. As he gets bear-hugged to the uh, ground that time by Aiden Sosa. Yeah, he had quarterback all the way, and I don't know why you wouldn't have quarterback all the way when Garcia's the leading rusher right here. Here you see 56 coming in there. He didn't even play the running back at all. He went and met the quarterback before he got ahead of steam here. And again, tackle for a loss brings up third down and 18. Tough down here for the Eagles. Garcia. Tried to drop uh -oh. that one off. It's uh -oh. tipped and picked. A tip pick and a, all the big defensive linemen getting the dirty work done up front and they get rewarded with the INT. Jaden Castaneda, that was one uh, he will remember for the rest of his life, a defensive lineman with the INT. Well, the pick, the, the tip was uh, Aiden Sosa, number 56. We just said his name. He tipped it up for his big old teammate right there. You gotta like it. <laughs> I love it, man. The big get the ball like that, and it's like they almost pee in their pants, man, when they get, try to get to the end zone. And it's fun to watch, man, I'll tell you what. I would just scream at the top of my lungs. At the, ah! No, man, like I'll the entire you. way down the field. If, if you I don't know, that. Gabe, you know. But if you don't know, you don't know. Exactly. And that's a pretty big deal for a D-line. It is. To, first of all, catch a ball. Yeah. <laughs> catch it first and then get, get sniffing the end zone. He got inside the five. He was smelling that end zone. How about Castaneda? I love it. Gabe, he knew what to do when he got the football. What are you talking about? Just took off running, man. Chugga, chugga, woo, woo, baby. Let's, Let's go. It. First down and goal here for the uh, Indians. They are, they are close to putting a, a big stamp on this early they've had the field position all night long this is their best start at the four yard line first down and goal but the eagles there defensively sanchez he was our feature impact, impact player as he drops molina for a loss Isidro sanchez 99 he's a pretty good looking kid he out triggered, there man that great job right there somebody forgot to tell him he wasn't supposed to play he came in there playing like his hair's on fire and Making a big play right there. Well, and if you're Brack, man, you gotta you gotta fig figure out a way to create a turnover yourself. You need, a, you need a takeaway right here. Option play, right side, great, great fake, move. and walking into the end zone is Jacob Saucedo. They bid on the fake, and he scores it from the left seven yards out. Fourth touchdown he's been a part of. Three passing, now one running. Yeah, that was kind of like a jump a jump fake, a shot fake in basketball right here. And again, whoop. Yeah, that's, that was all acting right there by Salcedo and getting it in the end zone. He knew he was going to go in the end zone either way on that as we got swinging gate again on the extra point for Harlandale. This kid is one heck of a quarterback, Andy. I just like the straight on kick. Got the, is that the flat toe shoe and everything? No. I think it is, But it is Andy. a different colored shoe. This one is uh, straight toed through again and it's 28 to seven Harlandale. We'll just go ahead and keep it here, folks. And uh, again, uh, next week's contest, Andy will uh, be gone, but uh, we'll be on on Saturday next week with uh, Churchill and Roosevelt. There you see the matchup next week, and that's an early start, folks. Is it 2 o'clock? 2 o'clock next week. All right, so October. Hopefully we get October weather, Gabe, uh, for our 2 o'clock start. Well, I don't think we're going to. I'm just saying, I think it's going to be incredibly hot. I think I'm going to prescribe 
just perspire a tremendous amount. I mean, I'm already like just completely soaked down here right now. I mean, going back up and down the stairs 17 times in this football game has not helped matters. But I guess the short answer to your question, please, please be cool in October. That's it. Two plays and four yards, the official drive there, but they lost yards on first down. So this touchdown was seven yards. And Jacob Salcedo, Andy, three touchdown passes and one rush in the first quarter. You don't see that very often. Well, again, first quarter, it's not even over yet. You said yeah. that. And again, they, they do a great job. Harlandale Indians now. You know, we alluded to a guy by the name of Toby Karoti, Gabe. He's, uh, Salcedo's very much got some of the same intangibles. I mean, Andy, you just take a jersey and put it on a different kid at Harlandale. They got a good quarterback each and every year, it seems like. The CS boots this one straight to the sidelines. And, uh, got a flag coming tell you in. what, Gabe, I know you've covered this district pretty extensively for us on big game coverage. Yeah. And already, you got to be. I mean, it's going to be down at uh, Harlandale next week, but Highlands and Harlandale is going to be a really big game next well, week, I think. And, and I'll tell you this, one of the keys to victory, I, Andy alluded to early on, was don't look past the Brackenridge Eagles because you've got Highlands, you've got Alamo Heights, you've got Burbank. Those are three. I mean, we know we know that Alamo Heights is a great football team, and I think Highlands might be the surprise of 14-5A with Willie Gaskin. That kid is, is electric. And then you have Burbank. I mean, you know, a Andy, I, I heard you talking about how – wins in 14 5 8 are, are, are gold i think if brackenridge loses it it, it puts a serious uh, doubt in, in their playoff hopes but outside of that you've got four or five teams vying for for three spots and and, and this this harlandale team is as good as any in 14 5 a maybe outside of alamo heights but they'll get their shot at the mules a, a little bit later on in the season they have empty the backfield now for garcia good field position for brack they have a diamond quad diamond quad on the right side, that's the short side, and they'll take a timeout, a little discombobulation here. But uh, continuing on that point, uh, and, and you know, that Harlandale Memorial Stadium is being no renovated. Flag. Timeout was called prior to the flag. Harlandale Memorial Stadium is being renovated, and so they have the home side of the stadium shut off for the games that are being played there. So the visitors and the uh, home team are both on the visiting the old visiting side of the stadium they have a kind of a makeshift press box that they put together there but next week Gabe Highlands were off to such a great start I mean they could have some trouble uh, putting all the people in the stadium next week uh, it, uh, when Harlandale plays Highlands it is going to be they fit about what Skelly about 5,000 people I think on each side I think it's uh, the stadium capacity is is 10,000 and Highlands is a good football team and they showed last week uh, or a couple of weeks ago when we did the, the Highlands uh, uh, Alamo Heights game, they, they they draw real well. We already know Harlandale draws incredibly well, probably one of the top south side draws uh, in that southern sector. I don't think they're going to be able to hold all no. uh, everybody on that side of the stadium. That's going to be a, quite a scene uh, next week at Harlandale if things continue the way uh, they are right now as Harlandale dominating this contest. First down for Brackenridge. Same formation, quarterback draw, big hole here for Garcia. And that's a good first down play, Andy, a gain of eight. Yeah, and again, the quad diamond over here, that's just smoke and mirrors to get you looking over here. And they put the quad to the short side of the field there. And again, trying to get your playmaker making the play right there and picked up a big chunk of yardage on first down as the first quarter comes to an end here. That's it, after one, Harlandale 28 and Brackenridge seven. Back to the rock pile with more of the high school football showcase presented by John Wayne Service Company on BTV. Have you been looking for a computer and electronics store that's right for you? Altex Computers and Electronics has been serving businesses and consumers for over 30 years. Altex has aisles and aisles of computer systems, laptops, network accessories, surveillance equipment, and thousands of cables and connectors. From computer upgrades and repair to complete system and network design and installation, Altex gives great customer service before and after the sale. Altex Computers and Electronics, your total technology store. Locations throughout Texas and ALTEX.com.
look at the uh, rock pile, Alamo Stadium, built in uh, 1940 by the Works Progress Administration, WPA, Franklin Roosevelt. And right there on the uh, midfield logo goes Julio Marine for a Brack first down as we start the second quarter. Hey, guys, right quick, how cool was that view from game day? It, 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 folks, if you if you didn't get a chance to check out our, our game day show at, at 630, that had to be one of the coolest views we've ever done that show from with the San Antonio skyline in the backfield. I'm, I'm telling Alamo Stadium is as unique as any stadium in the state. It's very historic. There have been so many, and you feel the history, Andy, every time you walk into this stadium. It, 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 you remember all the great games that you saw here or played here even. It goes to football past. Is he eating Skittles? No. Nope. Garcia, quarterback draw again. I think they found something here, Andy, as he gets behind the scrum, and they spread it out well, to get uh, some bodies out of the middle. I would definitely go straight ahead against Harlandale right now. I mean, you got some bigs up front. You're averaging. you got 270, 240, 280, 250, and 260 up front for Brackenridge, and why not? Go shoe to shoe, get in there, let them start mushing on people, and pick you up some yardage on first down here. So uh, the Eagles now with a second down and three. Brandon Garcia with Julio Marine next to him. They look to the sideline for the signs. Indians with four down linemen. Garcia keeps it again, and he'll finish the run strong there. And it appears to have another first down, another tackle there by Nicholas Rodriguez for Harlandale, but it is enough. For an eagle first down. Julio Martinez, number 54, was also in on the tackle here as we see Garcia's numbers coming in here. 60% completion. But you see his rush yards there. That sets him apart. Uh, he actually, as you see right there, able to finish finish a run the right way, falling forward and getting the first down. Has a 52-yard touchdown run tonight. Again, Brack just hoping he can complete enough passes to keep the defense honest here. Keeper again, he'll follow his running back through. Another nice first down play, and Andy, they're going right at him, and yeah. I think that is a valid strategy here for Brackenridge. Straight ahead, not 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 any kind of direction sideways, just straight ahead, straight ahead. I don't know if that should have been a handoff or if that was a, a design quarterback follow. Very effective, though, on first down. That's a big physical offensive line, guys, and, and, and they get off the ball well, and I agree with, with both of you guys. Just straight north and south running, man. You don't need much much other than that second and four now Garcia keeps it again he hit that one well and he breaks it free and has another first down good on the fake and then Garcia keeps beautiful I get a flag over there on the uh, Harlandale sideline he takes a shot at well, the he, end of this yeah, he got bent awards Andy as he was going down man mm. Pretty good yeah. shot right there well, at this age, sometimes you have the, the stretch. Well, he is hurting a little bit. Yeah, his left knee got bent weird. Yeah, you can see there. Flexible usually uh, at this age. A lot more flexible than when you get Gabe's age. Oh, they'd have to cart me off on a front-end loader if that happened Defense. to me out there, man. Number 56 in the neutral zone. Decline. First down. So first down for the Eagles. Pretty good drive going yeah, here, Andy. Ridge on the move right here. Why but not? You would believe that uh, Garcia, after taking that shot, might hand the ball off this time. And he will do just that. New running back into the game. That is Elias Gonzalez Tiarina, hyphenated last name. Pretty good pickup, though. Gain of three. Yeah, I like him. He's not real big. He's about five foot eight. He's listed at five eight one sixty. Gets in there and able to pick up a couple, get underneath the, the defense of Hollander there. Nice drive here. Back in the game now is Maureen at running back. Second down, Eagles. And it's going to be Garcia keeping it again, hitting the corner, turns the corner, and it's a touchdown for Brackenridge. Twenty one yards for Brandon Garcia. I, I think he's okay. Well, I want you to see this right here. Harlandale on second down decides to come up and bring people off the edge and up the middle. All he does is duck inside and then bust it outside. 
30 who's been in there all the time for Holland Nicholas Rodriguez gets sucked inside. That's 30's responsibility to contain, and he got beat to the outside that time. Great job by Brandon Garcia going and getting a touchdown. Don't don't call it over yet for the Eagles. Gentlemen, that was a nice drive by Brackenridge. It really was. And they ran some clock too. Again, they need to shorten this game a little bit. Jimenez on for the extra point. The kick is no good. And so the score will be Harlandale 28 and Brackenridge 13. You're watching the High School Football Showcase presented by John Wayne Service Company on Me TV. North Park Lexus of San Antonio has earned elite of Lexus status for 27 consecutive years. And North Park Lexus of Dominion has earned elite status every year since opening in 2016. Visit either North Park Lexus location this winter and test drive the all-new 2023 Lexus RX with its all-new redesigned sleeker exterior and more powerful stance. Available this winter at either North Park Lexus location. Proud supporters of high school athletics. Have you been looking for a computer and electronics store that's right for you? Altex Computers and Electronics has been serving businesses and consumers for over 30 years. Altex has aisles and aisles of computer systems, laptops, network accessories, surveillance equipment, and thousands of cables and connectors. From computer upgrades and repair to complete system and network design and installation, Altex gives great customer service before and after the sale. Altex Computers and Electronics, your total technology store. Locations throughout Texas and ALTEX.com. He plays in 60 yards there for Brackenridge. 3.30 off the clock. Andy, that was a very nice drive that Brandon Garcia capped with his second touchdown. Yeah, much needed and took some time off the clock. Here's a pooch kick, fair caught here by Harlandale. Tell you what, a, a, a heady football player is number 30, Nicholas Rodriguez for Harlandale. He just understands the game, where to be, how to get there. And he did it again on that. I think the uh, Eagles may have been offsides on the uh, kickoff. You can add it on to the end of the uh, run. Right. Which would give Harlan a great field position. They were going to have good, great field position anyways. Trying to sort it out here. We're not in a super big hurry. Well, it is know. a school night. Just take your time. Yeah, just saying. Come on. Andy, what kind of moon is it tonight? I, I haven't asked you. You know yet. what? I didn't even seen it yet. I have to see it. Is it a wee doggy moon? I don't even know when it comes up. I didn't even look today in my class. And Gabe, even way going way back to your days at the Southside Reporter. Yeah. Um, just want to make a comment here on Brackenridge in a second. Let's hear the call first. Offsides on the kicking team, five yards from where the ball was received. All those years. The one thing that was a constant in SAISD was Brackenridge was going to be in the hunt every year, year after year after year. So the start this season is, is a bit surprising. It's very uncharacteristic of Brackenridge. Yeah, absolutely. And, 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 you know, we thought they were going to be a factor in this playoff. They lose this game. It's going to be tough. You know, I had Willie Hall on on our outside the locker room. He was there for over three decades. And. You know, a lot of that credit, although Willie yeah. will not take it, because he is, he is as 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 everyone else centric before he's me centric, and, and, and he just had great programs and he had great discipline. And you're right, this is an anomaly for this Brackenridge program. Eagles uh, trying to make a defensive stop here. As Zion Molina stuffed on that play. And coming up off the bottom of the pile was number 99. That's going to be a Sidro Sanchez. Scout, if they could get a stop right here in another drive like we just saw, this could. It's a one score game. Yeah, I mean, the game could turn around quickly here. Try to, as we say, Gabe, knock that ball out, punch it out, tickle it out, whatever you got to do, bite, scratch, try to find a way to get a turnover. I, I just like to, to force Harlan to a punt. So I said a deep drop, deep ball, open receiver. There's if, a flag down, it's caught by Molina. He'll race it in for a touchdown. It's coming back. It's uh, 56 yards if it counts. As I am Molina. I'd be willing to bet what I have in my wallet, which is about. Well, you know who threw the flag. That's a pretty good bet. A $2 bill and a wooden nickel. 
This Holding. is coming back. Offense, number 70. That is a referee Ramon Jimenez tonight. And it was a good call. His umpire is uh, Gerald Harden. Holding number 70, offense, 10 yard penalty. Repeat the down. The headlines been tonight is uh, Trevor Whitney. Richard Gile is the uh, line judge. Johnny La Hoya is the uh, back judge. Charlie Silva, 25 second operator. And uh, Art Brown, the scoreboard clock operator tonight from the Texas Association of Sports Officials. That was a big penalty that negates an Indian touchdown. Well, I look for them to go back to that because Molina was wide open. Second and long, Salcedo will scramble left, set up, avoid two defenders, and now chunk one deep, and he has a man, and it is caught at the 29-yard line. What a scramble ad lib as Asparza makes the catch for the Indians. How was that not, I mean, I'm on the other side of the field, Andy. That would look like it was supposed to be intercepted, wasn't it? Well, again, the defense stopped it just like the touchdowns that were scored in the end zone. But look, right here, we're seeing Salcedo, man. He's making four or five guys miss. He steps out and just puts Chingale on the football, man, and gets it over the top. And great job by Esparza bringing it in. Uh, in coverage was number 12, Ga uh, Gavin Perez. But again, ball with, I mean, Salcedo's got an arm, y'all. He could throw it. He put it out there. Option play right side. Hit as he pitched. Molina with the... Uh, run and got a little love tap out of Boy, bounds he took a shot guys on that option yeah and Salcedo is getting up slowly yeah. but he does put his hand up and say nope I'm staying in guys that's what you like to see out of your quarterback guys Salcedo so far 8 of 10 for 157 yards that completion moments ago was 43 more for him he's having a heck of a night and he's showing right now just how tough he he's is a tough kid man let me tell you Second down and four for the Indians. Salcedo flares it out too high and incomplete intended for Esparza. That's one of the few times he misfires. Man, that was to the wide side of the field up there, and there was a lot of, a lot of room out there trying to do a little two-man game again, get it out on the flare. And second down, line up and play third. Andy, that was such a... Uh, an opportunity for Brackenridge to come up with a stop. You just can't let plays like that happen defensively. Well, sometimes you, you, you're not trying to let it happen, Bobby. It happens because of the, the play of number 11 right there making it happen. So that's, that is what high school football is all about, guys making plays and guys that weren't able to make the play. Arlen, now one for two on third down conversions tonight. So I'll say that. Two double fakes trying to set up a screen, and it's too low for Molina. So Brack may have their stop here unless the Indians go for it here or maybe try a field goal. I don't know what the straight toe from here game. No, you're going to get I'm, four I'm down going forward on fourth down yeah. here, yeah. And I'd like to get a shot into that foot, guys, if we can, because I'm telling you, it's one of them Dempsey half-foot shoes. I'm telling you, it, it's flat in the front. And he's playing linebacker, too. Well, you know so. Dempsey had half a foot, right? You know no, that? no, that's the uh, yeah. Did he really? Yeah. He did, actually, yes. Was it Jack Dempsey or is that the fighter? That's the fighter. Oh, right, right, right. Boxing guy. Fourth down, the Indians go for it on fourth and four. Salcedo has time, fires it across the middle. What a, ball. What a catch. <laughs> Climb the ladder, touchdown, Harlandale Indians. Got him one. Once again, it was Saxon Langenberg as they are spreading it around here tonight. Well, you knew it was a matter of time before he's going to get his because statistically he's he's in the mix as the top receivers here. Way oh. to climb the ladder right there. He caught that on the bottom half of the football with his fingertips. What great hand strength from a receiver to be able to do that. Fingertip push-ups, Gabe. That's how you get that. <laughs> Something that was an excellently thrown football. Yeah, I really thought, Andy, when when number 11 took that shot, it, it, it jarred him a little bit, but that pass there said, nope, I'm good. There goes straight-toed Rodriguez. This is it, doink. Well, we were bragging on him, Gabe. It's your fault, clearly. I gave, I gave him all. <laughs> 34 to 13, Harlandale, 708 to go here in the second. You're watching the High School Football Showcase presented by John Wayne Service Company on MeTV.
It's high school football time, and John Wayne is right in the middle of the action. At the end of this game, one of the players will be chosen as the John Wayne player of the game. Go to johnwayne.com right now and vote for the player who you think will win. Pick the correct player and you'll win two tickets to a 2023 San Antonio Gunslingers home game. And just for playing, you'll have a chance to win the John Wayne $10,000 home makeover package. Don't fumble. Go to johnwayne.com and vote before the end of the game. I'm very disappointed in Greg Abbott and what he's done for Texas over these last several years. Texas is 41st in school funding. Students have overworked and underpaid teachers, and that's not gonna equal a great outcome for them. It feels like kids don't matter, teachers don't matter. Beto O'Rourke will turn it around. Fully fund our public schools. Invest in our kids and the future of Texas. More Indian uh, success offensively. They're up to 34 points here in the first half. And uh, we still got more than half of this second quarter to go as the uh, kickoff is fielded along the sideline by Jacob Robertson. But that uh, six play and 54 yard drive for the Indians. And a 17 yard touchdown pass, Jacob Salcedo to Saxon Langenberg. Well, now you're Brackenridge. Go back and do what you did on that last drive now. It, it, it's your drive going, move the chains. You know, Coach Norman knows that you want to come out here, burn some clock, and again, let, you're going to have to let your defense be your defense when it's on the field and try to get you a couple possessions back. But right now, you got to get points on the board and stay in this thing uh, and, and get you some points to allow yourself to maybe get you those turnovers and some points down the road. Well, they get the football to start the second half, right, Andy? Yes. First down in uh, for uh, the Eagles, rather, from the 32-yard uh, line. Brandon Garcia hands it off this time. Maureen headed to the left sidelines and out of bounds at the 36 with a pickup of about four. Well, that was a pretty good job by Maureen at that time. If you see the replay right here, he had great vision, though. We got a Harlandale Indian come flying in there. Watch him just step over and hurdle this guy coming in here low right here. Whoop. Yep. Nice hurdle there by Julio Marine, a 5'9". He's 200 pounds. Pretty good size running back, just a junior. Did you see Coach Larry Norman? Shotgun set here for Garcia. Hands it off. Short gain this time. It is uh, Elias Gonzalez Tijarina with his second carry of the night. They got a manageable third down and four right here. Again, keep keep the chains moving. Find you something to get you that four to five yard mark right here. Third down and four. Eagles one for three on third downs. This is a free play. Well, they make contact. So yeah, encroachment. Get it any way you can, right? Yeah, man. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. You'll take it. And... But he had the right idea, guys. He yeah. was. Letting that one fly. I don't know if he changed up his cadence or what, because there are about three, three or four Indians that were moving. Referee uh, Ramon Jimenez going to give us the call here. That is the 10th uh, penalty of the game overall. They're talking about something. And it appears to be the fifth against Harlandale, unless they were drawn off. Here's the call. Encroachment, number 6-6 six, six on defense, five yards. Guys, one thing that's, uh, you know, Harlandale has had a short field pretty much the entire game. The stats aren't as lopsided as you would think with a 34 to 13 score. Brack with 146 yards of offense, Harlandale with 213. Turnovers, man, the great equalizer. The turnovers and then yeah. the just fantastic field position. And now we get another early whistle. And now we're going to get the five yards the other way. False start, number 56, offense, five yard penalty. Repeat the down. Yep, they gave it those five yards right back, but they still keep the first down. See the Indian fans 
they have uh, some of the best support, Andy, of, of any school in San Antonio. They love their Harlandale Indians it's on okay. the south side. It's yeah. all right. <laughs> Very passionate fans. Some of the best really anywhere in the state, I think. Brandon. Once an Indian, always an Indian, and it says it on the sign across the way as let, Maureen runs it ahead for let, a let me add some context to my uh, snarky little remark there. I'm a McCullum. I'm a McCullum class of 1989 graduate. My entire family went to McCullum. And, you know, one of the things we've always admired is, is what you're talking about, Andy, is that, that south side pride that's over at Harlandale, and it runs deep from generation to generation. And you got to experience one year when you were a coach at McCullum. Yeah, absolutely. Great tradition over there. Fake jet sweep. Garcia's got big yards, and now it's a foot race. And they're not going to catch him. This will be the third touchdown for Brandon Garcia. 60 yards on this one. Keep doing what you do and keep doing what you know. And good things happen to you right there. Great job busting it out. When he gets out in the open, Gabe, he got some quicks, man. He got down the sideline in a hurry. I, I think his knee's OK. I'm just going to go out on a limb and say his knee is fine. He just straight out ran the uh, Harlandale defense once he got out in the open. Some of them had angles on him even. Here's a little swinging gate look. A little six pack look. Yeah, that's three, not even, a, that's yeah, not a, even a swinging gate, a six pack. That's not, not your usual six pack, but in, in this case. <laughs> I'm gonna drink a six pack of Diet Shasta after this. <laughs> timeout on time the out. field. Harlandale. Harlandale quickly took a timeout there, Gabe. They didn't. They want their deep when they kind of baited them into taking a timeout. That's why you do yeah. that kind of formation right there. At worst, draw a timeout. It draws a timeout, gets them to burn a timeout. And they were looking for no, it's just numbers, guys. You got, I say six pack, you got three on one side, three on the other with the center in the middle, and then you got running backs behind it. All right. And if they don't match up, or you don't got four, four, and three, you're going to go where the odd number is not. And you're going to get you an easy touchdown there or easy extra two point conversion. Six pack is not just a Kenny Rogers' worst movie. It was actually a formation no, we just you, saw right now. You laugh. You laugh. Well, no, well, I, hey, I, when I was I'm in McCullum, we ran it against Medina Valley and scored a touchdown. They didn't know how to line up to that, it. And that, we chingulate them right there. A, <laughs> but Spell that for Gabriel. me. Gabriel? Yes, sir. Did you say a, a six pack of Diet Shasta? Yeah, Diet Diet Strawberry Shasta. That's my that's my Shasta choice was of Shasta was bad enough. I didn't know they had a diet version of it. Oh, it's that's got a taste. It's not like good. Turpentine. It's, it's more of a taint than Strawberry a taste, turpentine. but it does go down smooth, ish. Ish. Yeah. It looks like they're Here looks comes, like they're going for two. They're going to keep the six pack. No? No, they're, they're going to come a, back to regular formation. They got a two pack on one side and a, They toss the six pack and yeah. now there's regular formation. Two two packs. So a, a four wide set here Garcia going for two. And they run a little uh, end around. What a play there as they get the two point conversion as it is run in by Aurelio Garcia. And so the new score is now Harlandale 34 and Brackenridge 21. You're watching the High School Football Showcase presented by John Wayne Service Company on MeTV. It's so easy to love pick and pull. Why? How about the largest inventory in South Texas? How about the ease of finding your part with our interchange in real-time inventory search at pickandpullsa.com? How about an organized yard and maps to find your parts, plus a shuttle? At Pick and Pull, we make it easy to save money on the quality used auto parts you need at a price you can afford. More to pick, less pull from your budget. Now that's Pick and Pull. The Kaleg Auto Group, the North Park Blue Bonnet family of dealerships has in stock over 2,500 pre-owned vehicles and over 1,800 new vehicles in stock or in transit. Choose from cars, trucks, and SUVs, domestic or import. Every vehicle includes our low posted price and our no-hassle 72-hour return policy. So no matter where you live, we have a convenient location for your next vehicle purchase. The Kaleg Auto Group, the North Park Blue Bonnet family of dealerships. You see uh, young uh, Brandon Garcia, he's having a heck of a night there, guys. That was a four-play, 68-yard drive for the Eagles as they kick it off again and has picked up 
along the uh, right sideline and return. Nice return for the Indians. Out to the 37-yard uh, line. This time it was uh, Langenberg. 57-yard run there by Brandon Garcia. Well, He's we still got five minutes, 39 seconds remaining in the half. And again, Harlandale and uh, Salcedo and company have been doing their thing, but great job by Brackenridge fighting back in this thing, trying to do what they can to stay in this. Now it's their defense's turn to step up, Gabe, and see if we can't get a turnover and, and extend this thing here. Andy, I'll take it a step further. Just get a stop. Force Harlandale. I think the only time Harlandale's punted is maybe on their first possession. Get a stop. Get the ball back. If you can get a score, you get the ball to start the second half. Andy, this game is far from over. Jacob Salceda out again. Well, this game, again, moving very slowly as Molina stumbles to the 40-yard line. Yeah, he doesn't stumble. He's going to go gain a chunk of yardage right there in the middle of that Brackenridge defense. Here, let's see what stepped up and grabbed him right there. Yeah, he tripped over the leg. Yeah, yeah, the leg of his offensive lineman there. Justin Menchaca was locked up on the defender, and his legs were sticking out a little bit. Yeah, it looked like someone reached up and grabbed his leg. Get your feet out of the hole if you're offensive lineman. You got to run your feet, game. Run, running ropes. Molina. Right side, flags down. Gabe, yeah, I, I would, you know, if I could go back in time, I'd like to see you doing running ropes. Yeah, I was good at doing running. I would make this like hut, hut sound. It was like really authentic. I mean, I, I was I was a rope running son of a gun. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> Did, Did you get rope burns on your neck? It's like hurt. Did you? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Gabe, did you ever bite it doing the running ropes? Oh, like, did I? I, did, I you, did you the, break the whole? Did you break I, the whole setup? I did that once in Holy college. Offense number sixty. Offense. Well, I, I I caused a pile up. They needed like you know wrecking trucks to bring to, to break it up, man. It was bad. Hey, running ropes. That, that hey. was holding. Holding number 60 offense, 10 yard penalty, repeat the down. That that is a that is a point in practice that's not always fun for the big fellows. The running ropes? But it's an important part of it though. Yeah. Nothing like a big man that can move though. Yeah. I remember Ronald Fielding was my coach. I used to call him Lumpy. That was his name, affectionately. So I said a deep drop. Fires it deep across the middle and it somehow gets to his receiver and another fantastic catch by Saxon Langenberg, up and over the defender. Again, that's just a, a little bit of a mismatch in height right here. Let's watch the replay. It's kind of a great angle right here. Coming right at you. So I'll say to putting the ball, put air under it, let his receiver go up and catch it at the highest point right there. That's almost like a 50-50. It, that's all it is, Andy. The, or he's 60 just, 40 in that he, case because of the height difference. But yeah, he's throwing the ball up and he's banking that those physical big receivers with great hands are going to go up and get the football. And now uh, he, he's taking it to the bank. Exactly. Molina. Nowhere to go. And guys, you, this is like Groundhog Day for the uh, Brackenridge defense. They get some stops and then Harlandale gets a penalty and then they're pushed way back. And then Jacob Salceda just chunks one down the field, and next thing you know, the Indians are uh, threatening to score again. Well, Molina was tackled for a loss right there. You see big old 24 there. Great job, Carlos Hernandez said his name already tonight. They're really keying on Molina a little bit. He's having tough sledding so far here in the first half. Again, we got three minutes and 55 seconds and counting right here in the first half, and we're still in the first half, Gabe. Well, if you're second and long, this is... This is in Jacob Salcedo's uh, wheelhouse, man, because he... Well, they need to try to get to him if they can. Looks like they're yeah. going to try to blitz here. They're going to try the uh, end oh, around. Nice cut there, and there goes uh, Joseph Vesparza. Another big play, and boy, Harlandale just big play after big play after big play, this time on the ground with Esparza. Well, that's what happens when you bring your linebackers up right here. Here you see your linebackers coming in, and they got to readjust, and you just make one guy miss. Boom. One guy miss. They had enough numbers over there, but great job, Esparza. He's got a little jiggy to him right there. Good job getting jiggy with it, making guys miss. Getting what? <laughs> Salceda, all day, keeps retreating. And throws it away. That's not going to make Ooh, the line of scrimmage. That's going to be a grounding penalty there. Yeah, yeah and uh, it's going to go back where he threw it from, correct, Andy? It should be where he, the referee's spotting it right where he threw it from, absolutely. Mm, that's going to be a big loss on the play. It could be a huge break for Brackenridge with three minutes, 12 seconds left here. Let's see. And the loss of down. There you see Coach uh, 
Brandon Molina, the defensive coordinator. That's That could be the break, Andy. And Jacob Salcedo is, that's kind of, I would say, uncharacteristic for him to make a mistake like that. He knows he has to get it past the line of scrimmage. Well, he was, but I he's also 30 yards from the I line of scrimmage, yeah. man. That's a tough deal when you got guys screaming at you right I, there. I don't know that he could have, Bob. I agree with Andy. I mean, he was trying. Back. Lost the down. Spot foul. If there was ever a window for the Brackenridge Eagles, Andy, it's right here. Coach Molina is hot. Yeah. Coach Molina is, is the daddy of Zion Molina, the running back. And again, it's always fun to have a coach's kid, watch a coach's kid play with his dad. And even though he's on the other side of the football, that's probably for best anyways, not having to coach your own kid directly. But you see the intensity that those coaches at Harlandale are bringing to the table right here on this huge. I know it says second and oh yeah there we go they yeah. changed it. Well it is second and sunken gardens theater yeah. for a first down. They got to get it to my house at Mission Del Lago to get a first down here I think. Or the Duckville platypus cage over at the zoo. <laughs> Do they have that there? Absolutely. And, and it's a, what did you call it again? A duck filled the platypus? The duck filled platypus the only mammal that lays eggs. No I get that. Well, I know what okay, a platypus mammal. I know what a platypus is but you're saying the cage is also duck filled as well? No it's a duck never mind. You, you <laughs> said a duck <laughs> oh said my goodness. Build. Oh duck build. build. Yeah. I got you I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, man, second down and 31. Is that animal a mistake? <laughs> Which means Salcedo's going to do what he's been doing all game. He's going to chunk one. Watch. Here he goes. Fires it across the middle. This is high. Oh, and a shot that was unnecessary. Oh, there's the flag. Wow. Wow. A, a freebie because Asparza gets whacked by Gonzalez T. Arena, and he did not need to even touch him. Well, he didn't know the ball was overthrown. I don't know. I'm just going to go on the air on the side of the little late watch. Yeah, it right. was. He yeah. gathered. He gathered. All right, I'll give you that in slow motion. Never, we'd have the Gabe, little mis mistakes like that. Oh, my goodness. Brack is just bang, bang, killing yeah. their chances I mean, of staying in this game. That's going to be automatic first down, too. So. Andy, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm across the field. What what did you think about that call? Well, at full speed, it was a little different. But in the replay, he Personal gathered. Personal foul yeah, on he, number seven. Defense, that's the right call. Hitting a defensive player. 15 yards. Gabe, my, I think it was the right call. But, yeah. but I come from the day that you went across the middle, you expected that too. So I'm going to go ahead and put that out there. That you, It's kind of like going in the paint in basketball. If you I go mean, in the paint, you know you're going to take contact. Guys, that was almost a, a sure stop. Protect yourself and all that I good mean, stuff. I mean, that was the chance for, that was the chance for Brackenridge. I'm not saying that, that they're out of chances because they, they can still get a stop here, Skelly. They get the football back to start the second half. They can make it a one-score game either on a, a possession here to end the uh, the first half or on their first possession. But, man, that is an ouchie if there's ever been a penalty. Yeah. I agree. And that is the antithesis of getting jiggy with it, I think. So a new set of downs here for Harlandale. Jacob Salcedo has trips wide left. Option play left side. Pitch to Molina. Molina turns it upfield and gets tackled at the 20-yard line. Well, again, Desidro Sanchez, 99, tracking him down right there. After about, what, a three- or four-yard gain here, they're going to say three-yard gain. Sanchez right there, number 99, coming in there and, and wrangling up Molina. Arlando, I think, Andy, now pretty content with running some clock with this drive. I would. Both, both teams, you know, I mean, the clock's your friend now. But you want to get it down under the two-minute mark for sure here with second down and, and eight and second down and seven. Jacob Salcedo sends a man in motion and hands it to him, and that is uh, Esparza again, that same play the other way this time. Pretty good defense, only two yards. Well, again, the lateral going the sideways deal. Both these teams, if you get, you know, on the run part of it, on the handoff, not so much as throwing the ball and getting it out there in a hurry. Uh, you know, it's one of those, both those, both these teams have been trying to do that. Third down and five right here. Clock's running under two minutes here. Run this clock out, get you some points going in at half. This is a big, big third down for the Indians. They are one for three tonight. What do you think he throws it up? Let's see. Don't be surprised. Man coverage. And they dumps it off underneath. Good decision there by Sosedo and his receiver. Is inside the five-yard line. Strong uh, finish there by Saxon Langenberg. 
and his first and goal, Harlandell. Yep, and again, first down and goal to go right here. Clock's going to run after they set the, the down box here. Here we go, minute 30 and counting. The Indian first down and goal, trying to get a, a 40 spot here in the first half. Option play left. Salcedo keeps. And he stood up, gets about a yard. First one there was Carlos Hernandez. Running into the short side of the field over there. A lot of traffic. Smart, smart on Salcedo's part, probably not to pitch the ball to his pitch man. Guys, is this the, one of the stranger paces of a football game that we've seen this year? It's uh, unique. It is. Second and goal at the two. Molina straight ahead, and that will go. be an easy touchdown for Zion Molina. Good tough run, little misdirection coming at you right here. Pretty good job burning the clock by Harlandale, utilizing what they can as we see the replay here. Come on, ooh, great block right there. Big old 70 come barreling in there. That's going to be uh, Juan, excuse me, Justin Menchaca. And big old body coming in there, putting, making his presence known right there, getting Molina into the end zone. Yeah, look at the uh, shoe. They switches it out. Nicholas Rodriguez does, and we have a whistle. It's a half a shoe, right? Yeah, let's look at this. Uh, look at close up here. Yeah, I like it, man. Got a little flap on the front of it. I don't yeah, know if you're, it's you're a... seeing the flap. Well, start. 55, Harlandale. You think I can fit in that shoe? Repeat to them. He's got that's a black awesome. shoe with a little flapper on it. That's, a, that's an old school shoe right there. I don't know if that might have been granddaddy's shoe or. I don't know. I, I can't remember a straight on kicker, Andy, that I've seen at the high school level in a while. Well, they're usually at the smaller classifications because they have to, but not at a. 5A, 6A, tip, but hey, it, it's effective, it's effective here. The best straight toe kicker I ever saw was Mark Mosley from the timeout. Washington Harlan Redskins. Down. Second timeout this half. Timeout here, we'll go ahead and keep it here as it's 40 to 21. Better than Jack Dempsey? No, Tom Dempsey. Tom my Dempsey. Bad. Yeah, my bad, my bad. Well, Tom Dempsey was before my time, though, well, I mean. Would that be considered cheating? That's what so he did? We had, well, he had half a foot. I mean, he had, yeah. he had literally the perfect head start to be a straight-on kicker. Right. I mean, I'm not making fun of his <laughs> of his impediment, but he he, he had a flat foot. It, that, yes. Is it cheating that Shaquille O'Neal seven foot two? I mean. <laughs> well, but here's the thing. All right, I'm not going to go I'm there. just saying. I'm, I'm giving okay, you. You I, want to debate. I got you. And he kicked okay. that. Uh, you know, Tom Dempsey had the record field goal for a long time at 63 yards. That's right, yeah. Back when the goal post were at the goal line. So he kicked that from the what, other the? side of the field. Way yeah. on the other side of the field. What year did they figure out they needed to move those goal posts back <laughs> after <laughs> how many concussions? Was, <laughs> yeah, that was, a, that was a problem, wasn't it? That's how you advance science, Gabe. I told um, you, you just yes. have to make mistakes, learn. Evolution, so, my friend. Somebody has to learn it. <laughs> Nicholas Rodriguez, straight toe, 25-yard extra point. Uh -oh. Up, and that is uh, Saucedo going to throw it up, and we're going to end up with a two-point conversion out of it. Well, that's uh, that's another way of handling it. Sparza with a great catch, and it's now Harlandell doubling up Brackenridge, 42 to 21. You're watching the High School Football Showcase presented by John Wayne Service Company on B TV. Oh, okay, we'll go ahead and keep it here. Sorry about that, guys. All right, so here we go with uh, 42 seconds to go. Well, we mentioned the uh, history, Gabe, of Harlandale. I have four family members that graduated, including mom in yeah. 1965, and Carolyn in 1973, and Sharon in 1975, and my, uh, my cousin's wife, Lisa, in 1986. And I also want to say our great sponsor, John Wayne Service Company owner Don Rackler is a 1974 graduate of Harlandale High School. So there's a lot of history and uh, once an Indian, always an Indian. And everyone feels that way. They went to Harlandale. They're very, they have a lot of pride in their school. Yeah, and you, you just look at uh, Fred Anthony, the new executive athletic director of 
of SAIST. He was a McCullum graduate. Then he goes to Harlandale, and for about a decade, he was the principal there, and, and he was very proud of of what they accomplished. And you're right, once an Indian, always an Indian. Here's the uh, kickoff. Brack needing a big return from the 25-yard uh, line and out to the uh, 36. And this is, uh, Andy, a situation that Brack is not particularly uh, ready for necessarily unless they can rip off another long run because they're not made for short drives with one time out. Well, you or know, long drives with one time but out. But we saw two long runs ripped off by number 10. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Brandon Garcia is capable of being gets the second level. If they can get him out in the open by formation uh, on the zone reader or even on the sprint out, there you see him coming in yeah. right there. He's 165 yards and 13 carries. Don't forget, vote for your John Wayne Service Company player of the game. Go to johnwayne.com. Make your selection if it matches ours. You will win two tickets to a San Antonio Gunslingers Arena League football next season. You get to see Coach Skelly up close and uh, personal coaching out there. And as predicted, they go with Garcia on the ground in the gain of eight. And you got about 28 seconds here. Let's see if they're going to get a little urgency right here and try to rip off another play or not here, and they are. Gabe, one of your best friends, Jesse James Leha, a Harlandale yeah. Indian. He is a Harlandale Indian graduate, and, and I'm telling you, man, that those roots run deep there on the south side. Garcia rolls left. He's going to throw a pass this time. It's too high. That stops the clock with eight seconds to go. Brandon Garcia. Did I ever tell you the story about when I knocked James out? Oh, here we go. I want to hear this. Overhand right. Caught him right on the chin. I was working out with him in his gym. <laughs> like, just out cold. Like, cold. Uh, it was... You and know, then you, and then you woke up. <laughs> you don't believe me? Uh, and then you went after Azuma Nelson next. <laughs> I know, right? He told me once when I got into a spat, he would hit me 50 times for every one of my misses. <laughs> and I quote, perhaps the last play of the uh, first half. And it is going to be uh, Brandon Garcia stopped, and somebody's mouthpiece, mouthpiece came, came flying out of there. Probably his teeth. Yeah. I don't think so. That will end a long first half an hour and a 31 minute long first half of football as Gabe Farias tracking down coach Albert Torres of the Harlandale Indians they lead it 42 to 21 yeah. all right guys I got coach Torres we're just reminiscing on my own south side reporter days back when he was in essence coach 14 5a every every week you got to be prepared and this is another example of of the tough matchups you guys are gonna have what do you need to do here in the second half to finish this game you know, we keep doing it, the, those that we had in offense. It, it was to move fast and, and make, get positive yards on, on every play, and we've been doing that. Defense, you know, in the swarm of the, the, the ball, it, it, does, it doesn't uh, change, you know, uh, the fact that, you know, they're, they're, they've got 21 points. Uh, you know, we got to do a better job on defense. But just keep going. Just keep doing the things that we're doing. All right, Coach, best of luck second half. Thank you. All right, guys, back to you. All right, folks, uh, we'll come up, uh, up at, after the break uh, here to Alamo Stadium and watch the Harlandale Indian marching band as their team leads it 42-21. to 21 here at the break. You're watching the High School Football Showcase presented by John Wayne Service Company on MeTV. The Kaleg Auto Group, the North Park Bluebonnet family of dealerships has in stock over 2,500 pre-owned vehicles and over 1,800 new vehicles in stock or in transit. Choose from cars, trucks, and SUVs, domestic or import. Every vehicle includes our low posted price and our no-hassle 72-hour return policy. So no matter where you live, we have a convenient location for your next vehicle purchase. The Kaleg Auto Group, the North Park Bluebonnet family of dealerships. Have you been looking for a computer and electronics store that's right for you? Altex Computers and Electronics has been serving businesses and consumers for over 30 years. Altex has aisles and aisles of computer systems, laptops, network accessories, surveillance equipment, and thousands of cables and connectors. From computer upgrades and repair to complete system and network design and installation, Altex gives great customer service before and after the sale. Altex Computers and Electronics, your total technology store. Locations throughout Texas and ALTEX.com. Hello, football fans. I'm Taylor Ahrens with TexasHighSchoolFootball.com. From game previews, recaps, live scores, and all the latest news, TexasHighSchoolFootball.com is your home for all things Texas high school football. 
And to dive even deeper into the huddle, subscribe to the Texas High School Football Podcast for interviews with people who make Texas high school football the sport we love. It's so easy to love pick and pull. Why? How about the largest inventory in South Texas? How about the ease of finding your part with our interchange and real-time inventory search at pickandpullsa.com? How about an organized yard and maps to find your parts plus a shuttle? At Pick and Pull, we make it easy to save money on the quality used auto parts you need at a price you can afford. More to pick, less pull from your budget. Now that's Pick and Pull. And welcome back here to Alamo Stadium. 42 to 21. Let's head to the field and watch the sights and sounds of the Harlandale High School Band. school band with their halftime performance here at the Rock Pile Alamo Stadium with the Harlandale Indians leading the Brackenridge Eagles 42 to 21. We'll take a break. When we return, we'll introduce you to this week's John Wayne Service Company Player of the Week. You're watching the High School Football Showcase presented by John Wayne Service Company on B to B. The Kalig Auto Group, the North Park Blue Bonnet family of dealerships has in stock over 2,500 pre-owned vehicles and over 1,800 new vehicles in stock or in transit. Choose from cars, trucks, and SUVs, domestic or import. Every vehicle includes our low posted price and our no-hassle 72-hour return policy. So no matter where you live, we have a convenient location for your next vehicle purchase. The Kalig Auto Group, the North Park Blue Bonnet family of dealerships. The BGC app, KSAT and TSB are delivering the best high school football Texas has ever streamed. Hold on to this one, 85 yards. We have the games, we have the technology, and it's all free. Over 100 games, highlights, and more. Bigger, stronger, better. This season, expect more. The BGC app, experience the next generation of coverage. Powered by the Children's Hospital of San Antonio. Y100, San Antonio's new country leader. Oh, oh and when it rains, it pours. Alamo City Proud. If I didn't love you, I'd be good by now. Mornings with when Frito you and Katie. You got your hands up, you're rocking in. Your hometown you country station. Here for a long time. San Antonio's new country I'm leader. Y100. North Park Lexus of San Antonio and North Park Lexus of Dominion have over 350 used cars in stock, plus over 100 L-certified vehicles available. Each L-certified vehicle receives a comprehensive 161-point inspection and is backed with an industry-best unlimited mileage warranty, roadside assistance, and two years of complimentary maintenance. Visit either North Park Lexus location to select one. For your high school student or graduate, North Park Lexus, proud supporters of high school athletics.
We're here at Veterans Memorial High School, home of the Patriots. They get a big non-district win last week over Canyon Lake as they have this week off and head towards district play. But with that win over Canyon Lake, Nico Thomas from the San Antonio Gunslingers introduces our player of the week with a game-winning field goal, Rafael Nunez. Yeah! 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 Oh, I played soccer for most of my life, since I was like four. And that's when it really started. I showed up one day and I kicked. Well, they actually called a timeout and tried to ice him. So when they came running back over, I, I looked at Roth and he was just smiling from ear to ear, just full of confidence. And so I felt really good about it. It's a situation we practice every week in practice and the whole team did a great job executing. Snapper, holder, the blocking, and of course the kick was great. So big win. It feels really good. It, most people don't think kickers would win. So. It just felt really good. Well, you know, as a coach, you know, I enjoy coaching football. I enjoy being around these young men. And it's just really a great thing to have John Wayne be able to kind of display what our kids are doing and how hard they're working, what they're working for, uh, and what they do for high school sports, and you know, like high school football, uh, and televising the games and with the awards and stuff. It's just, it just makes everything that much sweeter. I want to thank my family, my mom, and Patriot Nation, and everybody that voted for me. Thank you. Uh, fellas, it starts in the classroom. Uh, if you want to go play college ball or just go to college, either way, when a coach comes in and asks, he says, how is he in the classroom first? So that's the first thing y'all need to do is just make sure you're doing it in the classroom. And then uh, behind closed doors, just always putting in work. And uh, someone's always watching, but even when nobody's watching, making sure you're doing the right thing and working hard. Once again, we want to thank Nico Thomas from the San Antonio Gunslingers for joining us, and also congratulations to Rafael Nunez, the kicker here at Veterans Memorial High School for his game-winning kick and our John Wayne Player of the Week, the first ever kicker, by the way, to win this award. You can participate in this great contest. Vote for your John Wayne Player of the Game during all the action on BGC and KSAT.com. If you select the same Player of the Game as our announcers, you win two tickets to see Nico Thomas and the San Antonio Gunslingers play and also a chance to win a $10,000 home makeover just for playing. And beginning on Sunday, vote for your John Wayne Player of the Week. It all starts by you going to johnwayne.com. Have you been looking for a computer and electronics store that's right for you? Altex Computers and Electronics has been serving businesses and consumers for over 30 years. Altex has aisles and aisles of computer systems, laptops, network accessories, surveillance equipment, and thousands of cables and connectors. From computer upgrades and repair to complete system and network design and installation, Altex gives great customer service before and after the sale. Altex Computers and Electronics, your total technology store. Locations throughout Texas and ALTEX.com. I'm Zachary Franklin. On the football field, my job is to do whatever it takes to win. Coach taught us we win the game with the right plan and teamwork. Your future is not a game. After a serious injury from a car truck wreck, how things turn out depends on having the right plan. Wayne Wright lawyers fight to get you the most money possible. Get a fierce, experienced team of lawyers who do what it takes to win. Call Wayne Wright now. 888-8888. Don't wait. Call 8. Respect. Justice. Demand it. Wayne Wright injury lawyers. The Kaleg Auto Group, the North Park Blue Bonnet family of dealerships, has in stock over 2,500 pre owned vehicles and over 1,800 new vehicles in stock or in transit. Choose from cars, trucks, and SUVs, domestic or import. Every vehicle includes our low posted price and our no hassle 72 hour return policy. So no matter where you live, we have a convenient location for your next vehicle purchase. The Kaleg Auto Group, the North Park Blue Bonnet family of dealerships. If you don't mean it, it's just words. Well, integrity is basically loyalty to be good when no one is watching, so you should do it because you know it's right.
back at Alamo Stadium. There you see the Harlandale Band finishing up their halftime show. We'll have the Brackenridge Band here in a moment. 42 to 21. Harlandale leading Brackenridge. We take a look at some of the first half highlights as uh, Harlandale certainly had great field position throughout this contest. As this play right here was probably one of the really big plays is you had the interception for Harlandale by Castaneda that set up a really short field and option play touchdown run there by uh, Jacob Salcedo. That was his uh, first running touchdown of the contest. But then back comes Andy, the uh, quarterback, Brandon Garcia for Brack. Yeah, they're having a real hard time containing him, and rightfully so. He's a pretty good talent in his own right when he gets in the open field. But it was uh, lots of uh, big chunk plays for, for Harlandale in the first half. Even when you thought you had Salcedo, he would come up with plays like this. Great job. Great job of looting. Great job by his receivers being able to. He threw the ball just out of the reach of the defenders. Great job by the receivers bringing it in. And uh, then on the fourth down play, the touchdown to Langenberg to make it 34 to 13. That was in the uh, third quarter, but our second, excuse me, second quarter. But Brandon Garcia answers with a 57 yard touchdown. Like I said, they're having a hard time when he gets out in the open field. He's going to go with it and take it to the house. Uh, but a, a penalty, and there's the two point conversion, but the a penalty by Brackenridge defensively when they were almost certain to get a stop allowed. Harlandale automatic to get first a, down yeah there. to get a late touchdown here at the end of the first half on the uh, run by Zion Molina and that was a a really big play and then the two point conversion off the uh, kind of faked uh, extra point I don't know if that was a mistake or intentional but it worked out for two to make it 42 to 21 let's look at the numbers now uh, the total numbers for these two teams and you see look at the, the it's, you, you look at 42-21, you're thinking Harlandale's dominating statistically. That's not the case, no. but the one turnover by Brackenridge, and the other thing is... Field position. Yeah, field position, field. so, so uh, critical in this contest. And and even though Harlandale has had eight penalties and 72 yards, Brack seven for 41, it seems like the penalties for Brackenridge came at the worst possible time. Yeah, the timing for sure was uh, critical for the Eagles and again you're looking at the one turnover which was the the tip interception by uh, the big D lineman um, but yeah no it's one of those deals that Harlandale you know they I mean excuse me uh, Brackenridge needs to catch a little break when they're getting their penalties because it's it's costing them and you know Brackenridge is going to get the football to start the second half but they're going to have to find a way to steal a couple possessions here though well they didn't need our, our help but I, I think we gave them an extra touchdown there they have four passing TDs. Five and one. Yeah, it yeah. should be one rushing touchdown. And Salcedo is responsible for all right. six of them. So, so it uh, it should yeah five and one. Because seven times seven will be forty nine. So seven times yeah. six, forty two. <laughs> Unless they missed every extra point, <laughs> which they did not. Uh, but a forty two to twenty one lead here uh, for the Indians in the uh, first half. The uh, Brackenridge Band is uh, being introduced here at Alamo Stadium for their halftime show coming up here in just a moment. Uh, next week, uh, our MeTV broadcast will shift to Saturday as we will have an early start on that as well, a 2 o'clock kickoff from uh, Hero Stadium, Roosevelt and Churchill next week on MeTV. Let's go to the field now and enjoy the sights and sounds of the Brackenridge High School Band.
happening. As we will take a break, Andy and I will discuss strategy for the second half when we continue from Alamo Stadium in just a moment is 42 to 21 Harlandale leading Brackenridge. You're watching the High School Football Showcase presented by John Wayne Service Company on PTV. Central Builders is an award-winning general contractor headquartered in San Antonio. Their construction projects include large-scale remodels, expansions, and ground-up construction. Their comprehensive service offerings, along with dedication to quality workmanship, make them one of the top contractors in the city. Central Builders is a proud sponsor of Texas Sports Productions. Call Central Builders at their San Antonio office at 210-590-0235 or visit them online at centralbuilders.net. The BGC app, KSAT and TSB are delivering the best high school football Texas has ever streamed. Wednesday, hold on to this one, 85 yards. We have the games, we have the technology, and it's all free. Over 100 games, highlights, and more. Bigger, stronger, better. This season, expect more. The BGC app, experience the next generation of coverage. Powered by the Children's Hospital of San Antonio. The Kaleg Auto Group, the North Park Bluebonnet family of dealerships has in stock over 2,500 pre-owned vehicles and over 1,800 new vehicles in stock or in transit. Choose from cars, trucks, and SUVs, domestic or import. Every vehicle includes our low posted price and our no-hassle 72-hour return policy. So no matter where you live, we have a convenient location for your next vehicle purchase. The Kaleg Auto Group, the North Park Bluebonnet family of dealerships. It's high school football time, and John Wayne is right in the middle of the action. At the end of this game, one of the players will be chosen as the John Wayne player of the game. Go to johnwayne.com right now and vote for the player who you think will win. Pick the correct player, and you'll win two tickets to a 2023 San Antonio Gunslingers home game. And just for playing, you'll have a chance to win the John Wayne $10,000 home makeover package. Don't fumble. Go to johnwayne.com and vote before the end of the game. here at Alamo Stadium as uh, we continue with our halftime coverage. Bobby Stotzenberg along with Andy Skelton and uh, a 42 to 21 lead here, Andy, for the uh, Harlandale Indians. And I mean, some things are just pretty obvious. And, and one of them is Brackenridge keeps allowing big play. They get they get Harlandale where they want them, right. second and long, third and long. And then they make a mistake defensively or a penalty that allows a Harlandale first down. So that's just the most obvious adjustment that needs to be made in the second half for Brackenridge. Yeah, and again, those inopportune penalties were huge, huge for Brackenridge. Um, and again, you know, you're going to control what you can control. Coaches are in there preaching that. That's what they do at halftime. You're not going to try to go outside of what you can do. But yeah, the big explosive plays, uh, Salcedo being able to chunk it down the field deep and having receivers come up with uh, big time catches, uh, those need to be eliminated or at least try to be limited uh, in the second half to try to climb back in this thing if you're Brackenridge. And for Harlandale, it seems as if uh, selling out to stop Garcia. Yeah. I mean, well, it, it, easier said than done. He's a, he's a good player, but you got to believe if you're Brackenridge, somebody else besides Garcia is going to have to make a play as well. Well, you saw they came up, Harlandale came up, and, and, and they sent seven, and he was able to make a guy miss that had the container. He was able to get outside of it. So you got to pick your poison, and again, if you guess wrong or if he makes you look silly, uh, that's just because he is what he is, you know, and, and again, trying to contain him uh, and make somebody else beat you, uh, if you will, in the in the run game for Brackenridge. But that is the thing that is the chess match that we're dealing with here. But, uh, you know, if you're Brackenridge, you're going to have trying to find a way to, to, to steal possessions. But you get the ball first to start the right. second half, and you got to go down the field. you got to put some points on the board here uh, and try to get back in this thing. All right, we'll be back with the second half in just a moment from Alamo Stadium. You're watching the High School Football Showcase presented by John Wayne Service Company on MeTV. Do you like going fast? Because I do. Hi, this is Jeb Burden with the John Wayne Service Company number 27 race car. I'm encouraging you to join the Fast Track to the Trades with John Wayne Service Company. 
Enroll in the John Wayne Academy for technical excellence today and change your life with a career in HVAC, plumbing, or electrical in just 90 days. Get paid to learn a trade. Take it from me. Get on the fast track to the trades and call John Wayne Service Company, 293-6700. North Park Lexus of San Antonio has earned elite of Lexus status for 27 consecutive years. And North Park Lexus of Dominion has earned elite status every year since opening in 2016. Visit either North Park Lexus location this winter and test drive the all-new 2023 Lexus RX with its all-new redesigned sleeker exterior and more powerful stance. Available this winter at either North Park Lexus location. Proud supporters of high school athletics. Hey guys, Kate Fanny is here with Coach Norman for Brackerich. Coach, uh, I'm guessing the message at, at halftime will uh, let's get a let's get a quick touchdown and let's let's get a stop. Absolutely, big message was compete. You know, we feel like we're getting out out jocked for lack of a better term in the, in the back of, back end of what we're doing. You know, we're getting pressure, we're not making tackles, so it's about competition this this half. All right, Coach, best of luck second half. Appreciate you. Thank you. There you go, guys. All right, uh, and Andy, this is far from being over. This uh, this. First half uh, certainly drug out a little bit, but that has given uh, Brackenridge some time to try to figure some things out. And Jacob Salcedo has been impressive, uh, but sometimes it's Brackenridge's own doing that allows some of those big plays. And so, how do you how do you defend a guy like Jacob Salcedo when he's able to keep a play alive as long as he does? I mean, that's not an easy thing for a secondary to well, deal with. You know, again, and Coach Norman just hit it on the head, man. He's like, all right, we're gonna if we're gonna bring pressure up front and Salzada's getting rid of the football, then we gotta we gotta compete in the secondary, not let those balls just barely go over our fingertips. We gotta compete a little bit, maybe get our hands on those receivers coming off the line of scrimmage, not let them get behind us as easily. Uh, you know, and again, if you're gonna send some pressure up front, you gotta be able to cover it on the back end if he's gonna let the ball go high in the air and put some air underneath it to alleviate his being sacked if you will and that's the competition like, you know you're giving up something when you bring an extra people up front you're giving up something on the back end um, you know and that's one of those deals with those guys on the back end you're leaving them hanging a little bit and they know that they got to step up and they got to compete and even though it's a three touchdown lead somehow this game doesn't really feel like it's in Harlandell's control yet not yet well they got still got to find a way to stop 10 you know I mean Garcia's done a heck of a job tonight uh, competing in his own right on the offensive end of it uh, but I think that the defensive side is what Coach Nor uh, Norman was talking about trying to find a way to get 11, uh, get him contained. And if you don't get him contained uh, or try to flush him out of the pocket, we can't let him just kind of miss and evade and then chunk it deep. And, and we make big catches that happen three, four times in the first half. Uh, those guys are going to have to step up. So it's going to be interesting to see if, if Brack wants to sit back and play, you know, a softer zone and not bring pressure. If something tells me, Gabe, that they're probably going to try to bring some pressure here in the second half. Yeah, I, th I think they absolutely need to bring some pressure. I mean, Andy, you and I talk about the simplistic nature of football. It, it's not rocket science. For Brockeridge, get that ball, get it to number 10 or number 33, have a long drive, get a score, and just get a stop. I mean, I know we, we talk about turnovers and we talk about, you know, tickling footballs loose, but at the end of the day, they just need to get a stop, get the football back, and keep some of that momentum or, and build some momentum. And the big thing that that does, you just hit it on the head. When you get a turnover, you get the energy back up on your sideline, and all of a sudden you start, you get that spark, and that spark starts to fire, the fire spreads, and it's, it's a big, powerful, uh, emotional lift for your football team. You can do some things that you normally wouldn't do when you don't have that energy level. Well, Jacob Salcedo in the first half, 11 of 16, 217 yards, and uh, four touchdown passes. He's also run for one as a... Uh, as has Zion Molina. He's got 10 carries for 20 yards and a TD. Brackenridge, their whole offense has really been uh, Brandon Garcia running the football. He's got 174 yards and three TDs on 15 carries uh, in the first half. And so uh, Brackenridge hoping for maybe some, some uh, diversity with their offense, although Garcia's been able to get it done on the offensive end for the Eagles. Some scores from around the area. All these games on big game coverage app. Uh, Brandeis with a 35-14 third quarter lead over uh, Madison. Uh, Wagner leads Kyle Lehman up in uh, Buda tonight. 21 to nothing at Bob Shelton Stadium. And uh, Holmes and Santa Mayor 8-8 in the fourth quarter. Santa Mayor looking for their first ever 
school victory and Holmes looking for their first win of the season is eight to eight in the fourth and on big game coverage on uh, Texas Sports Productions Radio. It's uh, Buta Hayes with a 28 to 21 lead over Bernie Champion. And also elsewhere, we have uh, New Braunfels leading Brennan, the Brenham Cubs, uh, 30 to seven in the third quarter of play. And this one's a shocker to me. Not that Smithson Valley's winning, but the ease of which they're winning. They are leading uh, New Braunfels Canyon right now, 35 to nothing in the fourth quarter. Looks like Larry Hill has the uh, Rangers up uh, prime for another great, great season. Uh, doesn't really shock me a whole lot. Coach Hill's the, the godfather right now when it comes to high school football in the area. He's the elder statesman, if you will. He became the elder statesman when uh, Willie Hall. That's right. Uh, retired from Brackenridge as Renee Casillas is going to kick it off here for Harlandale, a low liner that is going to bounce and be picked up at the 10 yard line, left side of the field. Pretty good coverage by the Indians as Brackenridge returns it out to the 28 yard line, return that time by Jacob Chavez. So Brack, Andy, first chance right here for the Eagles and a chance maybe to get back in the game. Decent return. The tackle was made by Saxon Langenberg. I like the fact that he's the stud receiver, but he also goes down there on kickoff coverage. You know, Harlandale, like most teams, put their their speed and cover guys on the kickoff. He did a good job that time, but pretty decent starting position here on the 28-yard line. And again, they had success when they were running the ball between the tackles downhill uh, with both the quarterback and with Molina, number 33 here. So let's see if they start getting behind the bigs up front for Brackenridge. All right, first down Eagles, first possession of the uh, second half. Garcia takes the snap, and he will hand it off to Marie. And uh, Julio Marie up to about the 34-yard uh, line, pushed back from there, but a good gain of seven on first down. Well, he went in first down right there. Good job. He bounced it outside at first. I didn't think he was going to get that much, but after contact, you see he weighs about 200 pounds. We said that. He's not real tall, but he's more like lower center of gravity, kind of like a bowling ball game, was able to get yards after uh, contact. You watched him last week. He's a physical running back, man, and when he gets going, he gets that stuff going. He's going to pick up four, five, six yards. Excellent first play for these guys here to start the second half. Second down and three. Maureen again, coming left again, and he'll run over a defender. Oh, there's your pick and pull collision, and out of bounds with a first down. See that Talk again, about a man. truck. That Talk was about fun. Bowling ball, man. That's just like a running over a pin right. Coming right at you. Great camera angle. Booyah. Get off of me. Good job right there. Great camera work. Pick and pull collision. And, Andy, there was a lot of that last week when these guys took on Jefferson. Maureen, big physical, low center of gravity, stays low, runs strong, runs hard, and he's got a little physical to him. He's got a little athleticism to him as well. At the 42-yard uh, line, fake to Maureen, keeper by Garcia, and he's up to the 45-yard line. Yeah, tackled by big 66, Castaneda coming in there. And again, running downhill, running between the tackles. Uh, he had a pulling blocker that time, was able to get him up in there. Uh, but picked up, let's see, they're going to give him three, three and a half yards on that carry right there. Falling forward, Andy. Yep. Falling forward when you when you get hit. Rogelio Parata, uh, the 6'3", 270-pound offensive lineman shaken up on that last play, comes off the field for the uh, Eagles. Second down and seven. Garcia with Maureen off to his right. Hands it to Maureen. Good defense this time by the Harlandale Indians as they uh, stack him up and shove him back. No gain on the play. Yeah, nothing doing. Maybe one on that. Again, Maureen, good, good tough trying to get run right there, but he's stacked up by a host of Indians. There you see number 32, Jay Simpuentes, in on that last play, and they empty the backfield now for Garcia on third down. Third and seven for the uh, Eagles. As Garcia looks to the sidelines. Hurry, Brandon! Hurry, Brandon! Quarterback draw. Breaks free. First down to the 45. Nice cut there 
by Garcia. He didn't really sell the, the pass very much there and still managed to get the first down. Well, they went three by two. They went an open set right there. What that does is get a linebacker out of the box. And he's able to make a guy miss right here, not get arm tackled. Great cut. Let's go get the first down. Well, the official stopped. Harlandale was hustling a player off, and the official stopped it momentarily. Not sure why. Going to reset the play clock to 40. There we go. Here we go. First down and 10 at the 45 yard line. Garcia keeps. Big hole. Garcia right. to the sidelines. And there goes touchdown number four. Brandon Garcia. Bobby, I want you to watch this right here. Harlandale brought the outside linebacker up again, stepped him across the line of scrimmage to take the run. Run fake right here. Watch this. They bring 30 up in there. It, nothing doing, man. They paid for it again. That's twice tonight that they gambled with the outside linebacker. Nicholas Rodriguez coming up in there. Brandon Garcia run right by him and makes him pay. And yeah, I was just about to say, it's kind of a mirror of what he did in that first half. They bring those linebackers up, they stack that box, and once he gets past that, that interior front, man, he is, he's off. And you got the receivers out there blocking man on and getting in the way and nothing doing, touchdown. The snap bounces. Somehow he gets the kick off, but it's no good, and that will leave the score. Harlandell 42 and now Brackenridge 27. You're watching the High School Football Showcase presented by John Wayne Service Company on Me TV. It's so easy to love pick and pull. Why? How about the largest inventory in South Texas? How about the ease of finding your part with our interchange in real-time inventory search at pickandpullsa.com? How about an organized yard and maps to find your parts plus a shuttle? At Pick and Pull, we make it easy to save money on the quality used auto parts you need at a price you can afford. More to pick, less pull from your budget. Now that's Pick and Pull. Central Builders is an award-winning general contractor headquartered in San Antonio. Their construction projects include large-scale remodels, expansions, and ground-up construction. Their comprehensive service offerings, along with dedication to quality workmanship, make them one of the top contractors in the city. Central Builders is a proud sponsor of Texas Sports Productions. Call Central Builders at their San Antonio office at 210-590-0235 or visit them online at centralbuilders.net. Here's the uh, kickoff, filled it at the 15 at yard line. Right side of the field. Oh, balls out. Ball balls came out. loose, but Harlandale, I believe, has it. Well, they almost got the turnover they needed there. Langenberg gets rocked on that replay. As that? Watch, watch that this Langenberg hit, folks. Langenberg took a shot. Watch this hit, folks. Right there. Boom. Knocked the ball loose. What you call biting the ball there by number three. Great job. That was Jalen Guetta. Isaiah Hernandez saves the day there for Harlandale. Let's look at that uh, scoring recap if we could, Shane, because Brackenridge scores on their opening possession of the uh, second half, 72 yards and six plays and another long touchdown run by Brandon Garcia. So it's now Harlandale's first possession. And they'll start at the 31-yard line. Handoff and blown up. Molina loss on the play. A great job right there. There was a host of Eagles in there. And again, they were playing the sign of football that time. Everybody met in the middle, met at the mesh. And you had 66, you had 85, and you had 32, I believe, in there. A flock of Eagles? Yeah, man, a flock of. That's different than a flock of seagulls. Seagulls, but yeah, I was going to go with what I was saying. A little screen pass to Molina. That's deep in the backfield, but he makes yardage out of it, and he'll have a first down. That seemed like a deep, deep screen, but Zion Molina made something out of it. Zion does a great job making one guy miss, and then it was on right here. They had a chance to get him. Giving ground, great ball by Salcedo. You see him put a little zing on that, and 
Little tunnel screen action, able to get in there, go get the first down. Andy, it's almost like he has his best plays when it's second and long. Yeah, you got to put a little pressure on him. I saw Sato has all day this time and now fires it across the middle and somehow avoided the umpire and hits his receiver, Lang Langenberg, and he'll have an Indian first down to the Brack 38. And again, Brackenridge having a little bit of difficulty getting to Salceda. Watch the umpire here, folks. Well, the umpire is in the field of play. You're allowed to use him to screen and he, he ducked out of the way. He get out of the way. I thought that ball was going to hit him. Like in the bad spot. First down to Indians. Salceda looks left. Flares it out. It is caught. And breaking right. tackles and down the sideline. See you later. Pedro Valenzuela with another touchdown reception. It's three for him tonight. <laughs> Tell you what, they do a really, really good job, Harlandale does, of their little slip screen, tunnel screen game here. Again, it's because 11, Salcedo, he, he throws a great ball. Gets out there on time, got enough velocity. It doesn't hang in the air. They're able to make one or two guys miss and get in the end zone again here. Jacob Salcedo to Pedro Valenzuela, 38 yards. Another Indian score. Here comes uh, the uh, shoe specialist. Is that a small <laughs> What is it? That's awesome, man. Straight toed and through again, and it's Harlandale 49. Brackenridge 27. You're watching the High School Football Showcase presented by John Wayne Service Company on BTV. The 2023 San Antonio Gunslinger season tickets are now on sale. Let's go, Gunslingers. Let's go, baby. Reserve your tickets for the original professional football team in San Antonio, the Gunslingers. It's fast paced, high flying, over the wall professional football. Plus, non stop entertainment. Affordable family fun is what the San Antonio Gunslingers are all about. To get the best seats and prices, reserve your 2023 San Antonio Gunslingers season tickets now. North Park Lexus of San Antonio and North Park Lexus of Dominion have over 350 used cars in stock, plus over 100 L-certified vehicles available. Each L-certified vehicle receives a comprehensive 161-point inspection and is backed with an industry best unlimited mileage warranty, roadside assistance, and two years of complimentary maintenance. Visit either North Park Lexus location to select one. For your high school student or graduate, North Park Lexus, proud supporters of high school athletics. Garage at uh, Brackenridge Park and the uh, zoo here nearby Alamo Stadium. 49 27 Indians with the lead. Another kickoff. Bouncing around and picked up at the uh, 10 yard line and a return down the sideline. And trying to tightrope it there, but stepping out of bounds with Jacob Chavez. If we look back at that drive once again for Harlandale as the Indians. Get another touchdown pass from Jacob Salcedo. We had him at five earlier. Yeah, and it was five. actually four, and it is five now. 49-27. Quarterback duel, but in not the way you think of, Andy. A running quarterback versus a throwing quarterback. As you see Salcedo's 38-yard TD pass to Valenzuela, who has three of the touchdown. Yeah. Great job on that play, getting people downfield to free him up, get him in the end zone. But now... Eagles got to try to make something happen here. From the 27-yard line, Brandon Garcia again. No, sir, nowhere to go. He keeps it and gets hit as soon as he pulled it away from Marine. Jason Fuentes, number 32 in there, right at the mesh. They were penetrating him. They got in there in a hurry, Gabe. Yeah, now they're at, they're at the point where, where you know, Bracker just has to try and continue to go score for score. They got to get a stop here, but I think, I think a stop I think a stop by Harlandale here could be uh, tough for Brackenridge to come back from. Brandon Garcia with all four touchdowns, going to throw one up, and his receiver turned the wrong way, or he threw over the wrong shoulder, well, one I, or the other. I think what happened was he thought maybe there was an offside. Yeah, I thought he, thought he had a free play. Yeah, and he just he, he threw a, a long ball, and, and I don't think a penalty was thrown, Andy. No, they didn't. Uh, I believe that was uh, Castaneda. The, 
that flinched and but didn't go into the neutral zone according to the line judges and line up and played third down here. And Caleb Contreras, the receiver, looked surprised that the ball landed anywhere near him there. It's like did we threw it there? Yeah, like bro, what are you doing? Yeah. Third down and ten, Eagles. Garcia scrambling. Let's it go, and it is caught. Oh, a violent hit, but somehow holding on to make the catch for a first down is Aurelio Garcia. What a catch. Yeah, great job. Great concentration right here. And how about Garcia? Uh, he thought he was going to run. He's like, nope. Squares his shoulders and gets the ball out there to his teammate who got rocked, but he held on to the football. Yeah, that's a first down for the Eagles at the 40-yard line. Andy, that's not easy to hold on to one like that when you get clobbered. Great job there by Garcia. That is Aurelio Garcia. Garcia to Garcia that time. Here's Brandon Garcia handing it off to Marin. Marin behind that line and shoving him backwards. Gain of five. Four Harlandale Indians were trying to hang on to Maureen that time, and again, his height to, to weight ratio gave makes him very formidable to bring down because of his center of gravity. Yeah, I mean, he's a, and he's a, he's a tough kid, and he's got some athletic ability, and uh, you know, that big offensive line just creates a small seam, and he takes advantage of it. Five yards. Brandon Garcia, second down and five, out of the shotgun again. Keeps it, runs it, finishes it. Close to a first down. Boy, they are fighting to keep him from getting upfield, but I think he has enough. And losing his hat that time will be Nicholas Rodriguez. Uh, Coach Norman was talking about competing, man. This is the definition of competition right here. Watch 10. Lowers his shoulder pad. Take it. He's the hammer, not the nail. His feet are still going. He's fighting. Helmets are coming off. Spit flying. That's what you call competing right there, Gabriel. Well, Did you say I, some nose bubbles were coming out too as well? Maybe. maybe. I couldn't see from this angle. Okay. Well, there you see going off is Nicholas Rodriguez. That's he lost his helmet. He has to come out for a play. But here. he continued to participate in the play. That might be a penalty. Well, against he was him. already wrapped up. How could he not? I mean, I, I don't know. They call if, that. I if this like, is a flag, I am not going to agree with this. He was already wrapped up when his hat came out. At off. all. I that I, I, I saw. He, I don't know how he unparticipates. When you're already wrapped, yeah, you're do wrapped you around scream, it. scream, I give up, I give up? What do you do, Andy? I don't know, I don't know if that's what they're calling Mercy. or not, man. Well, I, I'll tell you, Brackenridge's coaching staff is initiating and why this not? discussion. Well, why you, not? You, get, you, you get the referees talking, you try to get a call, man. I'm not, I'm not begrudging the coach that. Yeah, there it is. They dropped it. That's, that's the art of coaching right there. Well done. Yeah, you got to. Doesn't mean I got to agree with it. Well, the good job by uh, Coach Larry Norman of getting this call. Personal foul, illegal participation on the defense number 30, 15 yards from the spot of the foul. I don't know. I don't know. We're gonna, you're going to make me watch it again. Okay. All right, watch go. number 30, folks, from Harlandale. Right here. He's already wrapped up. And now he's got his How does he unparticipate? Jesus Christ. All right. <laughs> that, is, that happened uh, in a full yeah. speed. A kid ain't going to let go. I promise you that. So mm. kudos to uh, Nicholas Rodriguez. Way to compete even with your helmet off. Yeah. Such, and, uh, such a difficult. It is. It is, uh, man. But they're trying to protect wow. kids. I get it. Yeah. But, you know, at the same time, let boys be boys. We all play without a helmet from time to time. We all get a little bloody. We get a little concussed. That's part of being a, that's part of being a male. <laughs> and that's why we play the game of football. We realize it's a physical contest. Well, all right, I've said enough. I'm not are, wrong. Are you saying you disagree? I disagree. All right, first and 10 at the 35 yard Good line. Good Lord. <laughs> there you hear it. Garcia again. This time he's wrapped up. Everybody's helmet stays on this time. They don't get him to the ground, but a good play there by Julio Martinez. Yeah, it's one of the few times tonight that Harlandale is able to corral him, Bobby. Uh, that hasn't happened often, no, that's for, for sure. Let's see the replay. They're saying it was a no gain or a no loss right at the line of scrimmage right there. But and he came off a block, too, to yeah, make that great play. job. That, that was 54, right? Yeah, that was Julio Martinez. Good job, initial contact right there. So it's second and 10, uh, Eagles. They have an extra uh, H back in now to help with the run game. Garcia will hand to Marine, and he trucks another defender. It's almost like he doesn't want to uh, sidestep anyone. Gain of five. 
Well, again, I don't think that's how Maureen uh, wants it to be. I think he, he likes being the hammer. He likes yeah. being the old bowling ball right there, getting up in the middle. Again, they're having their success game straight ahead between the tackles that's right That's it, now. man. He ain't built like that. He's a north-south runner. Ball at the 30-yard uh, line. And now a penalty flag and a false start, I think, against the Eagles. Coach Norman. Prior to the snap, false start, number 88. Five-yard penalty, repeat the down. Boy, that's just, that's that's a killer when you're getting chunks of yards like that, three to five yards, and then a penalty yeah. like that sets it back. As a coach, it, you know, it's one of the deals you move, like you're saying, you get a little momentum, and then uh, something that's within your control, you have an unforced error. And instead of third and five, you're in third and 10 now. So Brandon Garcia faces a oh, third yeah, and 10. Out at the 35-yard uh, line. Quarterback draw again. Garcia, another big run again, and Garcia to the house again. Wow. 35 how, yards. How good is this kid? I love it, man. Oh. Hey, they're competing, man. On the offensive end, they're really, really, really competing right there. Flag. And there's a flag. There's no Where? on the ground. That flag was about at the 15-yard line, well into that. Yeah. Well, they, at that point, he was already past everyone. You just stop blocking. Kids, if you're walk, watching at home, once you see the back of your runner, you can stop. Yeah, but you may not be able to see the back of your runner. Coach, if. Coaching tidbits by Bobby Stotzenberg. Yeah. Then make sure your helmet's buckled up. Let's see here. Right There's. Here. They got it right back there. That's going to be spot of the foul. It may still be enough for a first down. Yeah, be a little close. short. At the very least, it's close. Holding number 33, 10 yards from spot of the foul. And yeah, they got more in. Spot of the foul was around. Now. <laughs> Coach Norman not. I'm with him on that. I'm like, let the kid play, man. Just because he burped a guy, put him on his back. You can lay on a guy that's not holding. That's what he's telling him. Keep playing 33. You're all right. Let's go. They're playing hard, man. They're playing hard. And they got to let them play a little bit. I mean, that was already, that was blown open anyways. That had nothing to do with the outcome of the play. So, oh, it's third and two now. Not quite a first down. I thought, I was like you, Bobby. I thought Close. the spot of the foul would got him. Yeah, they dropped the flag at around the 17-yard line. They're saying they're hungry, I think, Bobby. Lil Pat Maureen. their stomach down there, did. I, I agree, huh? It is getting late. It is. Last week, just for a little reference, last week's Jefferson Brackenridge game at this time, I was packing up my stuff, man. It was an hour and two hours and 15 minutes last week. We still have 337. I think they're going to end up putting some time. Are they going to put time on the clock? And really, it's up, honestly, it's up to the officials to keep the pace going a little bit. Keep the flag in your pocket. Yeah. yeah. Correction, it is a first down. There you go. I thought, I thought the spot it. of the foul would have been first down. All Oops. right, so first down. Brack. I bet we see 10 again. Trying to stay in there. What what makes you say that, Scott? Why not? Julio Marin with Brandon Garcia at quarterback. Marin off to his right. First and 10. Marin with the carry. Marin turns it upfield and a gain of about nine, almost 10 on first down. Good job right there again. Good job by the receivers on the outside too, Gabe. They're, they're playing man up on those guys and allowing him to get in there after, and watch after contact the yards he gained. Yeah, he, even, even when he does go to the sideline, Andy, how quick does he just cut it up the field? This kid does not want to go side to side. He wants to go north south. Second and one for the Eagles. Garcia, empty backfield, gonna run it. Garcia, not even touched on that one. 19 yard touchdown. My goodness. Well, they went three by two. They went empty set. You know what that means. Quarterback draw, let's roll. And again, 10 have a heck of a night for the Eagles. Watch right here, coming right at you. Watch it part, wide open. Got a block on the play side linebacker. Great job by 54 that time. Big old lineman, Alex Estrada. You know, Skelly, they may not win this game, but there's no quit in this Brackenridge no, team. They, 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 coach wanted them to compete. They're competing. 
They just got to get a turnover. They're playing behind a little bit on a couple possessions here as we. Yeah, we got a bit of an injury timeout here, but yeah. uh, that was. Uh, they've scored on every possession so far. Two possessions. Harlandell is going to have their uh, second possession here momentarily, Andy. And uh, again, guys, Brackenridge is literally just one stop away. I mean, they've shown that they can't be stopped all of a sudden. And um, what they need is one stop, and then, the, then you give yourself a chance. Yeah, I mean, maybe come in the form of onside kick, something. I don't know. you got to get the ball back, though. You're running out of time. How, uh, how, prophetic, yeah, how prophetic was that onside kick to begin the game? Like, Coach Norman kind of knew how this game was going to go with a lot of scoring. You've had one stolen possession, guys, and that was that was to the Harlandale Indians when they had that uh, defensive lineman get that interception and about score. I mean, uh, uh, right now, again, you get a stop, you score here, you get a stop, and you get another score. It's a one. It's a one-score game. They're going to go for two. Quarterback. Yeah, I'm guessing uh, Garcia is going to keep it one way or the other. Garcia, no sprint out, and the receiver got collided with. No call. Yep, there it is. Flag. Pass interference coming against Harlandell, so that'll move it up to the uh, one and a half. Good decision by Garcia. Let that one go. Good call right there. Intended for uh, Dominique Campos. So move it up to, uh, again, uh, half the distance to the goal. Come on, guys. Stripes, y'all got to get it moving a little faster Let's go, here. baby. Let's go. School night. Just they, being meticulous. Come I on. Know, I know, Gabe. They have a tough job, but it is. But it's half the distance. <laughs> Defensive <laughs> pass interference. Defense. So one and a half yard line for a two point conversion. Quarterback. Get it to 10, get out of the way. They're going to go open set. He's going to get under center. No, surely not. All right. Nobody in the middle of the field. Two point conversion again. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Quarterback sneak. <laughs> that was nifty. And Maureen Maureen in, has the uh, two point conversion. Well, we got a flag down. Do we have another flag? Oh, my. Goodness. Well, it's going to be defensive uh, encroachment offsides on the defense. That's going to be a good two-point conversion. Right. Very creative play by Andy Offsides. Quick. Offsides. Defense. Decline. How, how excited did Andy get when he saw that? 30, 49 to 35. You're watching the High School Football Showcase presented by John Wayne Service Company on MeTV. Sat in TSB are delivering the best high school football Texas has ever streamed. Hold on to this one. 85 yards. We have the games, we have the technology, and it's all free. Over a hundred games, highlights, and more. Bigger, stronger, better. This season, expect more. The BGC app. Experience the next generation of coverage. Powered by the Children's Hospital of San Antonio. Busiest guys on the field of these kickers kicking it off again and again. Harland up from the 15. A nice return. A really nice return. And here comes Saxon Langenberg with a kick return touchdown. My goodness, folks. This is unbelievable. That one's 85 yards on the kick return touchdown. Saxon Langenberg. 
guys, we're going to hit 100 points in this game before it's all over with. Andy, you're lost for words here. I'm sitting there going, okay. Looked like they had him dead to rights coming out the front door here. Thought I saw a flag on the field, but it wasn't. It was the kicking team. He's in a loss for words because he's got a mouth full of Skittles. <laughs> 50, 55, 35. And um, now comes the black shoe. The Spalding. This puts a smile on my face. I don't Love know it, why. I think it's awesome. Little nostalgia. Why not? Man? Nicholas Rodriguez. Straight toe boot. No good. No good. So it's 55 to 35, a 20 point lead. We'll go ahead and keep it here. Guys, this is one of the. Is, is bizarre a, a good way to describe this football game? Bizarre. I mean, it's not the craziest game I've ever called, but it's uh, up there. It's got its oddities. I'll give you that. I think I, because we haven't identified the moon, I think it's a Jackie Glebus moon or I something. Think it, I think it has a lot to do with the fact that we're playing in this old old stadium. Maybe. It's, it's kind of like the ghost of football past, man. A lot of greats for 80 some odd years. And, that took 16 seconds for Saxon Langenberg, Langenberg to score. I mean, think about it, Andy. We got the flat, old school Spalding, all leather, probably metal cleats shoe that he's kicking with. Don't you know? say nothing about that, Gabe. That's illegal. You what? can't do that. You, you can have a flat. You, if you can have, you can't have metal. Mm -mm. If you can have half a foot. Don't unparticipate him. If you, if you can have half a foot and play football, you can play with one of those weird leather shoes. Not with metal. Are you sure? Not the metal spikes on the bottom, no sir. I don't think that's there's metal no. spikes in there. They're gonna unparticipate him. Yep. Is that what you're saying? Yep. Okay. Personal foul. Right, quiet, quiet, quiet. Six hundred and uh, ninety-seven yards of offense so far. What if that shoe falls off and he continues to participate? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I like the way Harlandale lets the toe poker come in and kick, but you got 55 that kicks. The kickoffs, Renee Casillas, been doing the honors all night on the kickoff. There he is, big old number 55. Is that a toe poker? Is that is no, that he's what soccer style in it? No, no, he is. Is that yeah. what it's called, a toe poker? Toe poker, straight on. This time to the 20-yard line where Geta fields it. Side to side, back to the left, oh. Oh. and it gets body slammed. <laughs> then we get a suplex. I'll say this, this has got to be one of the more Guess physical who? games I've seen. Langenberg. Langenberg's all over the place tonight on both sides of the special teams. He's special team player of the week for the Indians, no doubt, when they grade film on this right here. Again, you got to love Jalen Guetta trying to make a play What's right this? here. Here comes pick and pull. Let me rearrange your front end. Oh, you're not down. Let me go ahead and strip your chassis. And flips him on the ground right there. Great job. Pick and pull collision. Pick and pull home of your best parts price guarantee. <laughs> hey, uh, you know what? Vince McMahon's probably calling him after that one. That was a back-to-belly suplex. What about the undercarriage chassis? Was that damaged in the wreck? I don't know. Depending on the extended warranty, Gabe. All right. That's why I have a Kia. 55 to 35. These kids, I'll tell you what, this, they've been out here a long time now. They're starting to cramp and feel it a little bit, I think, Gabe, down there. They're kind of moving a little bit slower getting off the ground. Yeah, I mean, this has been a long game, and it's going to be a long game. We're, what, at about two hours and 44 minutes right now. We're going to get to 100 points. This thing's going to end about 1045, maybe? Mas o menos? I don't know. 2.04 to go in the third, folks. Brackenridge again now from the 20 yard line. Maudine right down Main Street. That's where they're to the 26. A that's where his hey, that's where his bread's getting buttered right now. Is straight ahead, man. And he does a great job after contact hanging on to the football. And that, yeah, you're, you're exactly right. The cramping up stage of the game begins. If you've ever had cramps and once they start, they ain't stopping tonight. You're going to have to find a way just to go with it, stretch it out. Again, you know, trainers are about to get their workout in as they lay him on the field there. And kind of massage the old hema gauge a little bit, Gabe. Crud? What? What's it called? <laughs> the hema gauge? Yeah, the hema gauge, man. It, it's right there. That's the thing that, that keeps your muscles from locking up. You got to. Is that a technique or is that a muscle that you're the stretching? Gauge is like a dumaflachi. Is okay. I kind of figured it's that's an area. It's regional. It's you know, <laughs> anatomical direction. 
So that's a regional area on the upper dorsal leg area? Yeah, it's usually unilateral to the, uh, you know, that area where the cramp is happening. Have you ever had cramps in your lats? Like, have you ever cramped in your lat? Is it's your lat muscle ever cramped? No, I have not. I've never hung on a pull-up bar that long where to get my lats to engage yeah, like that. Your lats cramping. I, today was lat day for me. I just did nothing but lats at the gym. Oh, you're one of those guys. I am. You today pick was, things up, put things down. Today was lat day. That a boy. Proud of you, Gabriel. Sir. Second down. Maudine. Good job. Going to be marked about a yard short. And again, though, you know, I still say the clock is your enemy, but they've been managing it and they've been hitting explosive enough plays that we're still in the third quarter here. Now you're going to see faking at the 33, right down Main Street by 10 right here. Touchdown, Groundhog Day, and here we go. This is not an insurmountable lead, Andy, by no, any stretch. At least we got a lot of football left, kids. Go ahead, brush your teeth, lay in bed, and enjoy this one. There we go. Garcia to the outside. Gets the first down and steps out of bounds. More importantly, he stops the clock. With 107 left. Pick up another play here in the third quarter. Again, Gabe, they're really competing down there. That's what Coach Norman was saying coming out at the half. He wanted to see that. Offensively, they've been doing it all night. Yeah, competing has not been the problem for, for the Brackenridge Eagles. It's, it's getting a stop defensively. Ball at the 35-yard line. Empty set. There's really two plays right now that, that just stand, really stand out in my mind. Quarterback draw again. Garcia to the <laughs> sidelines again. Garcia steps out of bounds with another first down. Oh, he's man. special, isn't he? Uh, well, I tell you, anytime they go three by two and there's nobody in the backfield with the quarterback, give the quarterback. He's going to run the ball, but it's easier said than done. You got white jerseys running into each other. They don't know which way's up. Great job, Garcia. It's been a while since I've seen two quarterbacks dominate a football game. He's tired, too. Yo, he has to be. He has to be. It's only third quarter, young man. Well, they, they called an official timeout. Well, they're measuring it. As it appears he has a first down. What do you mean? They've already 20, moved the chains. They, they're yeah, not that's, measuring anything. I think no. they're, they're saying, let's get a juice break right now is what it is. <laughs> Bring out the orange slice. I think they called they called juice a juice box. break. Yeah, a juice box Holy break. Holy moly. Yeah. They're both teams. Yeah, break out the orange uh, slices. Well, what are they doing? No, the referee needed a drink. The fruit roll-ups? No, the referee needed a drink. He's got a sip. The fruit roll-ups, Andy? Have you ever had fruit roll-ups? No. Uh, there's an injury on the Harlandell Hard sideline. You oh, can't see it because it's... Injury. It's actually on the sidelines. He's not, let's, let's preface this. It's not an injury. It's cramping. Likely. Yes, likely. All right, Brandon Garcia, guys, through three quarters here. We're not even done with the third, by the way. 24 carries, 284 yards, five touchdowns. Now I want a juice box. <laughs> okay. First down at the 42-yard line. Empty set again. Nobody in the middle of the field. Gonna up, try a little dump pass, and his receiver drops the ball. Aurelio, Aurelio. Garcia. Aurelio, we said his name tonight. He wished he had that one back. Hit him in right a in bad hands. spot, baby. Bad spot, right in the hands. Gabe, you talk, we, we talked about Brackenridge needing a stop. Harlandale hasn't had a stop in a while either. They haven't needed to have a stop. I mean, they, they keep scoring. Yeah, they already got the possessions they need to. I'm going to say that uh, Coach Torres is thinking otherwise. Yes, we do need a stop. Probably, but I mean, uh, you know, when you got 11 and you got 84 and you got what you got offensively. Almost a missed exchange there, but somehow coming out of the pile with the football bouncing it outside is Maudine, and he gets a pretty good game. And now he's cramping up. Yeah, it hurts, man. I'll tell you what, and it, they've been out there a while. And once they start, you, you give them a little pickle juice, a little Gatorade, you know, you got to stretch it out, and it, it don't go away. And then wake up in the morning, you if you've ever cramped, you know it, it hurts. Now, now, granted, I know what the answer is going to be, Andy, so spare me the sarcasm. If you can, what is the most painful cramp? 
and don't say all of them because I know they're all painful. What's the most painful cramp as a man of, of science? Well, we need to ask as the a man of science. We need to ask the question, what is pain? <laughs> Before we can have that conversation. <laughs> oh, it's getting so late. <laughs> Are you starting to cramp, Gabe? There's Gabe. I'm That's a, Gabe. That, we got Gabe in the box down you, on the... You know what's funny is I, I get excited when I cramp up because it means I still have muscles left. You know, when I cramp up, I start celebrating. And my yeah, it makes like, you feel alive. I, Katie's like, why are you celebrating? It's <laughs> because I still have calf muscles. I'm so happy. Because I thought I'm like just pure mucus by this point. Like I'm just skin <laughs> and mucus. That's my entire frame of my body. Maybe a few gelatinous bones. And that is it. Oh, my goodness. Folks, we're still in the third quarter, just in case you're wondering. Third and four. Garcia hands it off. Nice move and Good. to the 31 yard line goes Elias Gonzalez Tiarina, who's playing both sides of the ball, Andy, and that's a nice run from him off the bench. Yeah, and again, he's not he's not their big guy, he's more of their scat back, but I like the way he gets behind the bigs up front there. You saw how he hit behind them and was able to slide through and get the first down. Remember Scatman Crothers. Oh, here comes the rolling pin. They're, they're using the rolling pin on Maureen. He's in a lot of pain. You he can is. See. That, they're going to have to work that out. That's a real thing, man. And, again, I don't know if he'll be back will, or not. Yeah, that's going to do it, folks. They're going to let it count down. That's that, it after three quarters of play. Harlandale 55, Brackenridge 35. You are watching the High School Football Showcase presented by John Wayne Service Company on MeTV. It's high school football time, and John Wayne is right in the middle of the action. At the end of this game, one of the players will be chosen as the John Wayne player of the game. Go to johnwayne.com right now and vote for the player who you think will win. Pick the correct player, and you'll win two tickets to a 2023 San Antonio Gunslingers home game. And just for playing, you'll have a chance to win the John Wayne $10,000 home makeover package. Don't fumble. Go to johnwayne.com and vote before the end of the game. I'm Oscar Cardenas. In football, we fight hard to make it happen. That's what makes us winners. 18-wheeler or company vehicle wreck injury put you on the sidelines? Get a winner to fight for you. A lawyer with grit and determination who will not stop until you get justice and all the money you deserve. And that's Wainwright Injury Lawyers, so don't wait. Call 8. Call Wainwright Injury Lawyers. 888-8888 now. Want to win? You know who to call. That's right, Wainwright. Respect. Justice. Demand it. Wainwright Injury Lawyers. All right, folks, there you see it. 12 minutes left here at Alamo Stadium. We start the fourth quarter at nearly 10 o'clock. And it's first and 10 Brackenridge Eagles. Garcia hands it off, and uh, Tiarina is tackled from behind Gavin by DeLuna. G Gavin DeLuna. Nice play from the backside of that uh, formation. He just ran the heel line, followed his tackle, took him to the football. No game. 55 to 35. What is the over and under on today's game, I wonder? Bet the over. Garcia going to keep it this time. Arlandell waiting this time for Brandon Garcia. He gets only a yard. Yeah, he was high load that time by Julio Martinez and Gavin DeLuna. That's kind of how you got to tackle 10. You ain't going to get them one-on-one -on -one usually. Good job playing off their blocks. And... By the way, today is Brandon Garcia's birthday as well. Happy birthday, young man. Kinda, uh, birthday performance. He, he is, and his receiver just jumps off. What do you get for bragging? It was an odd offsides, I'll say that. Instead of third and nine. So we'll have a 78 second discussion on it. I think the officials are wearing down. False start. Offense number 85 yard penalty. Repeat the down. 
We have a history tonight. Soto, Soto Mayor has their first varsity football win. They defeat Holmes tonight, 14 to eight. Soto Mayor had a baby. Coach Morales getting his first win with the Wildcats. Yeah, Juan Morales is one of my favorite guys coaching high school football in San Antonio, man. Now it's third down and 14 for Brackenridge. Does Brandon Garcia have anything left? He's gonna try to throw. He's gonna scramble. He's gonna spin and they'll get stopped for a loss. Yeah, Nicholas Rodriguez. They kept him boxed in. Spying on him a little bit and was able to wrangle him up. And brings up fourth down and 281 over here. It's fourth down to the platypus Cage. duck cages. Duck, duck bill cages. Duckville Platypus. Yeah, Down to 10 minutes to go. Fourth and 17 Eagles. From the Harlandale 38. Four seconds on the play clock. And here we go. Garcia gonna throw one across the middle, has a man and is caught for a first down. He hasn't completed many, but that was a big one. That says Caleb Contreras with the reception. Great job. It's again a landmark route. Coming right at you right here. Put the ball out there, throw his receiver open. Good job hauling it in that time. It's kind of a jump throw, wasn't it? By Contreras. Yeah, he was able to get it out there, though. He knew where he was going with it. So first and goal at the 10-yard line. And Julio Maureen is back in the game, Andy. They rolled the cramp out of him. And Garcia had a man wide open in the There's flat. Flag There's a the flag. Bobby, will you ever utter that sentence ever again? <laughs> they rolled the cramp out of him. They rolled the cramp out of him. They rolled the pin out. You, know, know, I, you didn't see the screen, Gabe. They actually showed him on the training table getting worked over. That's what he meant. Like a Offside. Tortilla? 56. They rolled the cramp out of him, yes. Well, what I'm saying is like a tortilla, like one of those roll, rolling pins that they make they tortillas did. on. Yeah, okay. They made tortillas with this calf, I'm yes. Gonna, I'm gonna steal it. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna do. Offsides, Harlandell. Skelly, you, you've coached for so many years. Have you ever had a game where it just drags on like this with a player? The, it's hard to keep your focus. And, it is, it and is. And they're and probably really exhausted. Offsides, number 56, defense. It's a combination. Five-yard penalty. Combination of penalties, combination of injuries, combination of cramping, and then a lot of scoring. Uh, and that's what's slowing this game down. I mean, it's not any one thing. But, I mean, you got 90 points of scoring with 22 penalties. So, I mean, that's going to happen. And it's, you know, school night. I might be tardy for first period, guys. There ain't only one teacher that's in, the, in this group. That's all I'm saying. First and goal now at the five for the Eagles. Marine, straight ahead. Scrum. There goes the pile. Forward and forward and down. Getting down to the two yard line. Yeah, going to be the forward progress. The finals from tonight that we have so far, New Braffles defeats Brenham, 40 to 20. Wagner over Kyle Lehman, 42 zip. Smithson Valley blanks New Braunfels Canyon, 35 to nothing. And Buda Hayes holds on to defeat Bernie Champion, 34 to 29 to go along with the Sotomayor win over Holmes. Garcia keeps, Garcia fumbles. He was almost to the end zone, and he is, he's getting up slowly. The ball came yeah, loose right before right he here. scored. Watch somebody, this. Somebody put their helmet right on the football. Oh, it was a hand. That's going to be 66. That's going to be uh, uh, Castaneda knocking the ball loose for the Indians. Backs him up to the four-yard line here. Guys, you think that was a shocking score, Canyon and Smithson Valley? Yes. Not that Smithson Valley won, but to dominate him like that is yeah. impressive. Canyon was undefeated, folks, before that game. Well, ranked number four, I think, in 12's top 12. Quarterback draw, Garcia. Smell in the end zone this time, he'll get in. I've lost track, Andy. What is that, five, six, seven, six? Seven. Yeah, no, 
a lot, well, a lot of touchdowns. Yeah, seven. He scored his a lot of touchdowns. Same old, same old, getting in the end zone. Great lead blocking. Busting it up in there by big old 56. Emiliano Robles for the touchdown. They're tired, Bobby. They're tired. Hands on the hips, and why not? A lot of scoring, a lot of offense tonight. Gabe, you've got to go up and down the uh, stands here a few times and just walking down up and down the field. Did, did you get you got your steps in? Oh, yeah. My, my watch has like been going off like crazy, like, you know, fireworks displays on my Fitbit. I've hit like 3,000 steps already. I'm impressed, man. Quarterback uh, keeper and the two-point conversion is good. So it's now Harlandale 55 and Brackenridge 40. Three, you're watching the High School Football Showcase presented by John Wayne Service Company on MeTV. I'm Rashad Wisdom. Coach showed us what it takes to win on the field and in life. You've got to have power and determination. You've got to be fearless but smart with a focused strategy. That's what it takes to win, and that's what attorney Wayne Wright's got. Wayne Wright lawyers fight to get you the most money possible. When life knocks you down with a car, motorcycle, or 18-wheeler wreck injury, get a champion. Wayne Wright. Don't wait. Call 8. Call Wayne Wright now. 888-8888. Respect. Justice. Demand it. Wayne Wright injury lawyers. That, folks, was one of the more impressive drives of the evening. You know what I love? Well, see, look at this summary. Yeah. here: seven minutes, yeah, 13 man. plays, 80 yards. I love, what I love is you saw right there, you saw quarterback Brandon Garcia. He's getting taped up. He's getting helped out. You know, he's, he's putting everything out there, man, and they are dog tired. And so, I mean, again, they still got seven minutes left in this. Uh, Oh, oh, if they touch it, it's oh, a live ball. That, oh, my that goodness. That might be Brackenridge ball. I, I think it hit one oh, of the Brackenridge players. Did. I see the bean back down, yeah. It's Harlandell football. That was a... Oh, I a, love the call, though. Here, let's see. A weird onside kick. What The ball, he kind of missed it. Watch it touch Brack, right? Uh, it hit that guy. He did. That would have just helped with the wackiness. Crazy. All right, little bit, let's see. Uh, updating our stats here. Brack 377 rushing yards tonight. 415 for Brack yardage. Harlandell 356 yards. And they're still ahead. You got 1,000 yards offense, 100 points on the board. What else could go wrong? Good stuff, man. Everybody's dog tired out there. All the restaurants are closed when we leave the stadium. Yeah, that could go wrong. We're not going to get to eat dinner. I know. Go straight to work. Go home and eat a sandwich. What do I do? Well, Jacob Salcedo hasn't been out there in a while, but here he is. And he hands it off, and Molina's blown up. Well, again, you know, we need to get a stop before Bra at Brackenridge here, right? So, I mean, it's one of these deals. One play at a time, try to strip it out. And guys are getting up slow. Nobody hurt. They just, it's, it's tired. We're tired. It's late. <laughs> 55 to 43, folks. And uh, another player. It's cramp. It's just cramps, guys. It's just cramps. Well, it's 42 percent humidity here tonight See at that, Alamo Stadium. That, that's upper frontal thigh, I think, or maybe hamstring. Guys, next week uh, we'll have a Saturday afternoon game. Our first afternoon game: Roosevelt versus Churchill, and that that kind of could be a battle for survival, Andy. Whoever wins that game, of course, Churchill's in a little bit better position than Roosevelt. They had that big win over Madison. So the uh, Chargers still in the hunt. Both of those teams technically still in the hunt for a playoff spot out of that district. That district, pretty good. 
which Reagan and Johnson and Brandeis off to good starts in district play. Second down, Indians. The swing pass caught. Langenberg ahead to, well, he didn't go down easy. He's nearly has a first down. Saxon Langenberg with the reception. Andy, how impressed are you with the execution? I mean, they, they, they've been sitting the entire, yeah. and still come in and execute the way that they're executing. Well, so I mean, Sato, you're right, so Sato throws such a, a pretty ball, man. Yeah. He gets, I, I'm gonna use your word there, pretty ball. Oh, you did use pretty, wow. Pretty. I like the way it tastes when it I'm, came out of my I'm mouth. I'm rubbing off on you, man. Throws a good ball, man, it gets out there all the time, man. It's tough, tough to defend. Salcedo so now third down and two. Arlano trying to get the first down and run clock all at the same time. And they're running out of time here, and they're going to burn a timeout. We'll keep it here. And uh, guys, Brackenridge just, they just haven't had that stop. Harlandale, six of 10 on third down conversions or one for one on fourth down conversions. But it seems like at least this is a conventional third down, not that third and 15 and Harlandale somehow converts. And I think they punted once, guys. I mean, I, I mean, how many times have they punted? I know they punted on the, on the opening. The they opening went three possession. and out. Yeah, they went three and out to start the game. And I think from that point, they have dominated offensively. Let's remind each other here that it is still a two possession game, guys. It I mean, is. It's, no, I, I've it's seen crazier things. Missed extra points and, and, and missed PATs and, you know, two point conversions, too. So, I mean, I'll tell you, Brack's still more than in this thing. They just got to get somehow, some way, get a football back. So, Santa lets it go. Caught. A little possession uh, receiving Seven. football as Asparza has an Indian first down. Yeah, you see the, the you see the crew showing up here for Brack, trying to get the ball out after hold him up and try to pull it out here. <laughs> Great ball by Salcedo, putting it in there for Asparza, picking up that first down. High percentage pass. He's 16 of 21 tonight, Andy, throwing the football. Yeah, that's pretty decent. <laughs> Jacob Salcedo, just a junior. For the Harlandale Indians. And Andy, some of the better balls that we've seen thrown, especially in that first half. I know right now he's zipping it around the field, but he had a couple of touchdown passes in the first half that were as good as any ball that's been thrown all year long. Oh my, another penalty. <laughs> you sound you sounded fired up about that, Robert. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was dejection in his voice, man. That, that was, was uh, Number yeah. penalty number yeah, twenty on the offense. Five yard penalty. Twenty what? How many? Twenty two penalties. Yeah, yeah they're, it's it's a long night, boys and girls, and they're feeling it out there. Got to finish though. Got to finish. If you're Brack, keep the energy up. Knock the ball loose. Get to the quarterback. All that fun stuff the defenses are supposed to get done. First and fifteen. And if you're Harlan, they'll just finish this game. Molina straight ahead. That's one Molina way to do it right there. Splits the defenders and inside the 20 he goes and a first down for Harlandale. Zion Molina. It's just a straight belly give. Look at the replay right here. Big old number 70 coming through there again. He's had a Justin Menchaca. He's a big body coming through, opening it up for Molina. How big is 70? That's a big kid. They don't have their height and weight listed for Harlandale, but I'd say he's every bit of 260, 270. Another first down for Harlandale at the 15 yard line now. Salcedo scrambling. Open field to the left. Hit hard, <laughs> but falls forward to the five yard line for a, another Indian first down. Well, I'll tell you what, neither one of these teams lack contact courage, Gabe. So I said it finishes this run here looking at the replay, and he 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 taking he, he trying to give it to him. I'll take it a step further. Neither of these quarterbacks lack contact courage. I mean, these kids, man, it, 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 this is tough, hard-nosed 14 5A football, man. A lot of big hits, a lot of big plays. This is 
you know, outside of the 47 penalties we've had, this is a fun game to watch. <laughs> First and goal from the five, Molina to the three. But you know what's happening here? This is good for Harlandale. They're running the heck out of the clock right now. Now Brack timeout. has to take yeah. a timeout. Brack and Ridge. And I mean, when you're going to timeouts, when the opponent is inside your five yard line, they're, they're sensing that their chances of winning this game are decreasing dramatically. Well, when you take your timeouts while you're on defense, all right, that's a 40 second timeout. You're saving 40 seconds as opposed to hold on to your timeouts for your offense. Uh, so I'm a proponent of, yeah, absolutely. You're still in this thing, 12 point game. Uh, I've seen weirder things happen. Um, I've seen a chicken get struck by lightning, you know, so you never know what? how you're going to get your chicken cooked. You know, you just <laughs> got to keep peddling. Would you eat a chicken that's cooked, that, that's struck by lightning, or would you? Where do you think the concept of air fryers came from? I don't think that is where they came up with <laughs> Absolutely. the Absolutely, Tesla came air. up with it. Google Te it. You're I'm right. Are you serious? Yeah. Tesla came the up guy, with The guy, not the car. Wow. Yeah, man. I wonder what that would look like. Of course, now I'm going to get canceled by PETA, all because of Andy's joke. Why? What well, Mother Nature did it. <laughs> <laughs> Only one turnover in this game, and Brackenridge desperately needs Harlandale to commit their first. <laughs> Second and goal at the three. Salcedo keeps it. Angling towards the side, and he's going to get shoved out of bounds, which will stop the clock. Or do they stop it? No, the flag is going to stop the clock. There, oh, there's another flag. Are you kidding me? I'm so sad. Come on. Looking at the replay here coming out, though. Let's see. Good job by Brackeridge stringing it out. First contact was by Pena. Holding offense, number 70, 10 yards. Well, there's your opportunity now for Brack. And they bit it. Feels like we've been here before. Oh, yeah. Right, huh? yeah. Here's your chance for a stop. You got it. You need a stop. Harlandell's hurt themselves with a penalty, but the, every time the Indians have managed to overcome it. Maybe this just maybe it's Brackenridge's turn for the big play here. A little break coming their way here. Let's see. On offense, uh, Molina. Nope. On the football. They brought in Nicholas Rodriguez as an extra running back. Call another timeout. Stop the clock. There's another timeout. Yeah. So Carlos Hernandez on the tackle 24 right there. Three minutes and 11 seconds remaining. This is uh, the high school football showcase presented by John Wayne Service Company on Me TV. Back in a moment. It's high school football time, and John Wayne is right in the middle of the action. At the end of this game, one of the players will be chosen as the John Wayne player of the game. Go to johnwayne.com right now and vote for the player who you think will win. Pick the correct player, and you'll win two tickets to a 2023 San Antonio Gunslingers home game. And just for playing, you'll have a chance to win the John Wayne $10,000 home makeover package. Don't fumble. Go to johnwayne.com and vote before the end of the game. I'm Zakari Franklin. On the football field, my job is to do whatever it takes to win. Coach taught us we win the game with the right plan and teamwork. Your future is not a game. After a serious injury from a car truck wreck, how things turn out depends on having the right plan. Wayne Wright lawyers fight to get you the most money possible. Get a fierce, experienced team of lawyers who do what it takes to win. Call Wayne Wright now. 888-8888. Don't wait. Call 8. Respect. Justice. Demand it. Wayne Wright Injury Lawyers. Third and goal at the 11. Saucedo hands it off, which is a bit of a surprise. And he goes out of bounds, stops the clock. Molina. You're right, Gabe, out of bounds. Now they start it. Nope, they won't start it. He went out of bounds. It's fourth down. And they've got a straight on kicker. I, I'm not, I mean, this is not obviously a, a done deal. Well, he's waiting to put the shoe on. There you see him. I think you got to go for it here. Nicholas Rodriguez. Down. He's like, where's my shoe, guys? He's, he looked to the sideline. Is it? We're going to call another timeout, call timeout here. Timeout yeah. Here. 
Second time out, this half of Harlandale. They both have one left. Yeah, well, pacing this game. I was going to say, was who was going to talk? We were playing the game. Who was going to talk first? Well, we didn't know if we were going to break. I was waiting for. I was, too. Let's keep we, it here, guys. We will. Like we will Lewis. here in just a moment. Right. We, we will. Say, let's keep it here. Well, guys, um, I mean, this is really a deja vu moment for the Brackenridge Eagles. The time and time and time again. Yeah, I agree with that. They have had opportunities like this where Harlandale's in a difficult spot to convert, and the Indians have always done it. But the conversion this time, Gabe, has to be a touchdown. Well, yes, it has or to be a touchdown. the shoe is out. The shoe has... Well, the shoe is out. I That's think right. they called the timeout to get the shoe. Can we can we get a shot on that shoe again? I, I'm telling you, it's a flat-toed shoe. There you see the black shoe on. Nicholas Rodriguez, straight toe kicker. Now they, they Here were... Here comes the kicking block. They forgot about the... Uh, I wore a shoe like that when I was club-footed as a kid. Let's see here. This is a 27-yard uh, attempt from the right hash with Saucedo, the holder. And it's a fake. Saucedo looks and throws to the end zone. Too far, and Brack has their stop. Uh -huh. Wow. Well, there it is, guys, the stop. It was a pretty well-designed play, and that was a misfire, I think, Andy, yeah, from Jacob fire, Salcedo. Fire, 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 all eligibles out. Back of the end zone, the corner in the flat right there, nothing doing. Yes, Kelly, I think that was, a, I think that, was a, that was a cold play, I think. Meanwhile, Brandon Garcia has been resting on the sidelines for the last five minutes of the game. Man, just go 90 yards, get a touchdown, get an onside yeah, kick, we still got a good, touchdown, let's go. Another 35, 40 minutes left in this one, so <laughs> <laughs> overtime. I'm thinking overtime. Oh, I hope so, man. It's been great. It's been back and forth. Hey, Brack finally got the stop that they got. We're already playing this late. Let's go. Are you going to make first period tomorrow, Andy? Oh, I, you know, we'll see. You, you, what was that? <laughs> what, what was that, sir? First down from the 10 yard line. Garcia, sprint out, jump pass. Tip, the dropped. No, nah, I just overthrown. Okay. Julio Maureen was the uh, intended target, and he actually was open. Again, you know, it's one of those deals starting to throw the ball, trying to get out of the out of the shadow of their own goalpost here. And again, these kids are tired now. You look at them, they're they're playing their old guts out on both sides, man, and it's been fun to watch. It's got to finish though here. Second down and ten. Garcia quarterback draw. Indians stack him up at the 12. You got four of them in there. A host of Indians, a tribe of Indians. Gabe, Gabe is uh, sidelining his guts out. Yeah, man. Wait, what am I doing? <laughs> that, Gabe. I don't see you. Oh, he's over there on the table getting. Uh, <laughs> yes, I, I'm getting. I'm getting tortilla rolled on my left hamstring. <laughs> They're down at seven. Garcia with the clock moving. Empty backfield. In trouble, lets it go, and it's oh, intercepted. Wow. Second turnover, Galindo with the pick. Uh -oh. Galindo the to the six yard line. That and second interception, or second turnover, and both of them on interceptions. And there is a flag on the field, of course. What? No. No, because there's something probably happened on that plate. I would, I would venture to agree with. On the. Uh, Flag's going to be on the Harlandale sideline here. Let's look at the replay. Again, just trying to make a play, man. You got crossing routes coming across, and the ball was a little bit overthrown right there, right into the hands of uh, Galindo. Yeah, when you get in a situation like this, Andy, you got to make something big happen, and yeah, you, you know, have an offense that just doesn't do that. Right. It's hard. It's hard to execute. Let's see what the penalty is going to be here. Sideline interference on the intercepting team, 15 yards from the end of the run. 
first down, Harlandale. All right, so we have players and coaches on the white over there. Back them up, coach. Back them up. Getting the full slate of penalties in the book. Called him. Well, now I think you can. Um, can you kneel down? Just do that one time out, Liv. One first down would make it so much easier. Molina going to get close. One uh, 40 and counting. Yeah, there's no, uh, there's, Andy, when do you call this timeout of your coach? Norman? Yeah, you got to make a stop right here on this yeah. play or otherwise there's, there's no point in it. Please do not go on or across the field. Gabe, do not go on or across the field. <laughs> Folks, you've got a minute and 22 seconds to vote for your John Wayne player of the game. I don't know that I'll make it on or across the field. JohnWayne.com win two tickets to San Antonio Gunslingers Arena League game for next season. Salcedo. And I believe Molina has it. Let's see. Down. Same third down. We're calling it third down, Bobby. Third down is short right here. No timeout. No timeout. Third down and less than one. Well, I guess if you get the stop here, then you call the timeout. You got a 20 second differential between the play clock and the game clock. But you're also down I, two scores. I don't think they're going to call a timeout, guys. I think they're 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 going to take team. this loss. Yeah, and, and move on. Third and one for the Indians. Salcedo keeps it, and he is going to get drugged down from behind. And uh, Brack's going to go ahead and let the clock run all the way down. That's so going to do it. All right, we'll be back with our player of the game. Harlandale wins it 55 to 43. You're watching the High School Football Showcase presented by John Wayne Service Company on MeTV. Lexus of San Antonio has earned elite of Lexus status for 27 consecutive years. And North Park Lexus of Dominion has earned elite status every year since opening in 2016. Visit either North Park Lexus location this winter and test drive the all-new 2023 Lexus RX with its all-new redesigned sleeker exterior and more powerful stance. Available this winter at either North Park Lexus location. Proud supporters of high school athletics. The BGC app, KSAT and TSB are delivering the best high school football Texas has ever streamed. Hey, hold on to this one. 85 yards. We have the games. We have the technology. And it's all free. Over 100 games, highlights, and more. Bigger, stronger, better. This season, expect more. The BGC app. Experience the next generation of coverage. Powered by the Children's Hospital of San Antonio. It's so easy to love pick and pull. Why? How about the largest 